You go to a teacher, it's only going to get worse. Welcome to the Inland Sports Inland Show. Sports Show. Your leader in sports <laughs> in the Inland Empire. In the Riverside. Now, here are your hosts, Pep Fernandez and Jeff Cora. What is up and welcome to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM every single day, live and amplified, 3 to 6 p.m., the only local sports show in the Inland Empire during your drive time every single day. Jeff Gorham, Greg Halla, I am simply Pep Fernandez. Jeff, you know it's going to be a great day when you can get up in the morning and watch a little football. Yes, the World Cup is in Russia. I was going to say the World Cup is here, but yes, the World Cup started today. You're, you're eight years ahead of yourself, but it will be here. Yes, we're going to be here, and I'm excited. I'm going to buy my tickets the first chance I get. You are? No, no, I'm not. But I'm just. I think there's going to be like 12 U.S. cities, and I'm assuming Los Angeles will be one of them. It's got to be. Yeah, they did actually. They did say that they're going to use the venues all across Los Angeles, so we might get several games at several different venues. Pep Fernandez. Lot. And lots of football. Russia, the host country, kicked everything off this morning, local time, against Saudi Arabia. And it was all Russian in this one. Greg Holler, let's fire up the highlight machine because it sounded a little bit like this for all you football fans out there. <laughs> That's, that's what I do for my, for my soccer calls. No, I don't. That, that's what I do before I take a shower. <laughs> Go! Every single time I walk into the shower, I do that. I yell it. Oh, what a wonderful wow. strike there by Russia. They won 5 0. Because picture this this is the most popular sport in the world, certainly in Russia. You are the host country. All eyes on the globe are watching this one game. There's only one game today to kick off the World Cup, and it was the host country, and you win by a score of 5-0. Can you imagine what's going on right now in Moscow? They must be going nuts. They're they're waiting in line for bread. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're going crazy just because they, you know, they're going to get probably drink a lot of vodka. Double rations. Double rations. Yeah, everybody gets double rations. They give them each each family gets one potato. Hey, somebody's calling our the phone in here. Who's calling the phone in There's here? There's like that's the best. I'm trying phone. to do a live little segment a bit here on World Cup soccer. This Someone's is calling the, the phone. The bat phone. But yes, hey, every, you keep talking. You want me to answer it? Yes, answer. Okay, every answer. family gets a potato and borscht. Did they hang up? They hung oh. up. I was gonna grab the phone and bring it back to the speaker. That would have been awesome. Yeah, might have been dangerous. Could have been. But yeah, every family got borscht and borscht. borscht. Lots of borscht. Maybe even a second helping of goulash. Hey, do you know what's really, <laughs> really good? What? Uh, stroganoff. Yes. Beef I love stroganoff. beef stroganoff. Is that Russian? Yes, of course it's Russian. I should know that. Yeah, how do you not know that, infidel? Yes. Beef. Beef. Uh, mushroom sauce. Is that noodles. what that is? Like, it's like a yes. creamy white sauce. It's, yeah. It's a, it's a mushroom sauce. Mushroom. A fine mushroom sauce. A little garlic. Pasta. Like Pasta. Like yeah, kind of. It's, it's like more like a spaghetti. Getty, I, I would to, say. Hey, I'm telling you, this, there's a place if you go to Vegas inside the Mandalay Bay called Red Square. It is the great Red Square. Red Square. It's a Russian restaurant. Smeddy Smed and I went there last time we were there, and there's a there's a bar that is made out of ice. The entire bar is made out of ice. So you sit up to the bar, and they have they have every vodka you could imagine. Every they had vodka for like a thousand dollars a shot. Ooh. But the 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 uh, restaurant was so dark. We were sitting there having our dinner. We couldn't even read the menus. It was very very chic. Very very chic. Sounds pretty fancy. It was really really fancy. It was really good. Phenomenal. But yeah, the Russians today put the hurt to. What did they put the hurt to? Saudi Arabia. Saudi. How did they play soccer in the dirt or what? The sand? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. There's but no man, way. Russia hammered them. Yeah, they in did. In fact, Russia they said was the lowest ranked team in the world. But they're the host country, so they get in. So I guess I guess Iceland was ahead of them. So I don't know. So does that mean we get in no matter what? Yeah. Probably it's Canada an automatic? and Mexico, too, I guess. Automatic bids? Oh, that's But you know who is in the World Cup? I didn't realize this. Who? Morocco. The, the country that we beat out to host the World Cup in 2026. Their team's actually in the World Cup this year. So I guess they're pretty good at soccer. You mean the, the, 
the place where Indiana Jones ate the, almost ate the poison C. pig? C. Oh, man. That, if they're making the World Cup and we're not, we're doing something wrong. You know what, I, what reminds me of Morocco? Wasn't it that movie Along Came Polly? And remember Ben Stiller's character? That, didn't they go out for Moroccan food and he ate all that spicy food? Yes. And he had to blow it out? Yeah. I remember. Wasn't it Morocco? Yes, it was Morocco. <laughs> right here, food. Morocco. I think of that scene from Along Came Polly and the guy, <laughs> poor guy ate all that spicy food. Oh, man. Here oh. he is with a good looking date. And it, man, it tore his insides out. That's right. It was a Moroccan. Was it? Recipe. Yes. <laughs> They're sitting on the floor eating with their hands. Yes. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> no. Not a good day. No, only when I go to Hawaii and I hang out with my bro, my bros, my bro, brothers, that, my bro? brothers. Tasty ways. Yeah, because I like to, I like <laughs> to take my sticky rice and jam it in my spam, which is people, and no, then my poi, poi and your poi and poi, and I throw it into my 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 bread. And I did eat you it. eat poi when you were in Hawaii with your bare hands? Poi, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, you gotta try. It tastes like paste. Remember when you were a kid and you were in kindergarten? Yeah. And you kids would eat paste and you go, what's wrong with that kid over there eating paste? Yeah. And then, you taste, me. It, and then you taste it and you go, ah, not so bad. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was a lot like paste, but uh nonetheless, eating people, uh poi and and rice, not a bad combo. The World Cup is off and running. Three more games tomorrow, so we'll be talking a lot of soccer in the next couple of weeks. It's all brought to you by Spoiled Quick Quality Oil Change off of Alessandro Boulevard. You can spoil yourself and your car. You know, every three or 5,000 miles, you got to get your oil changed. We all know that. Can't go way over. It's only going to hurt yourself and your car. Want to feel better about your life? Make sure you go get your oil changed at Spoiled off of Alessandro Boulevard. All right, we also got to get to the U.S. Open. Um, it's underway in Shinnecock Hill in, in New York has not been very kind. It, it's a tough course. And it's not going well at the U.S. Open for a lot of golfers, including some big names. Rory McIlroy, uh, Phil Mickelson, all Jordan Spieth. Everybody's struggling out of the gate at Shinnecock Hills. Brendan Steele, the pride of UCR and him at high school. He's at two over par, which actually isn't too bad right now. It's actually a pretty good, decent score. Ricky Fowler, Murrieta Valley at three over par. Those guys are both in the clubhouse. Their day is done. Aaron Wise from Santiago. And also, uh, David Gazzolo, the guy out of Riverside Poly and UC Riverside who just qualified for the U.S. Open, they are still on the course. So we'll bring you updates on them as well. Jeff, do you have the leaderboard in front of you? Where was Tiger Woods at? Because I think he was at like one over or two over when I last took a peek at the leaderboard. Well, he was three over, and now I'm trying to find him now. I'm reading. I'm a very slow reader, but I'm going to find him. Oh, he must have dropped pretty far here. Like, hold on. Uh, Phil Mickelson plus seven, Bubba Watson plus seven. I don't think you have a very good leaderboard. Let me see. Tiger Woods, because this is all very fluid. It's it's in progress as they are still on the course. Yeah, you're going to have to find him. I can't. I don't see him anywhere. He's on there. He's got to be on there. He was on the course. He was. He's on the course right now. He, He did not finish his first round yet. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. Let's move on to Dodgers. Dodgers and Rangers, big brawl last night. The Dodgers won in extra innings by a score of 3-2. to two. It was a, a wild game as Matt Kemp collided with the catcher Chirinos of the Texas Rangers. It sparked a brawl. It was pretty good, but not, I wouldn't say one that will go down in the history books. You're not going to write home about this one, but it was pretty good. But the game-winning hit came off the bat of the great Austin Barnes, the Riverside Poly Bear, hit a slow dribbler back to the mound, but your boy, Kike Hernandez came charging home. Let's go back to the highlight machine because it sounded a little bit like this as Austin Barnes knocked in Kike for the walk-off run for the Dodge. Bouncing ball. Bush has it. Comes home. He didn't get him. Hernandez scores. The Dodgers danced their way to a win at home plate. Jeff Bannister wants him to take a look. Did he get his toe on the base? You should have seen it. Kike Hernandez slid around the tag of the catcher, reached back in, touched home plate, and that was it. And Austin Barnes, kind of the hero in that one. It wasn't a clean hit, but it was enough to bring home Kike Hernandez from third, and the Dodgers win. Yeah, it's a win. You know, a win's a win. So a little anger in interleague play as the uh, Doyers took away a victory. But Tiger Woods, I have an update. Oh, here we go. We found him. I found him. We found him. 
He is now plus eight through 14. That's not good. He was three over on the front nine, and now he is, woof, he is not doing well. He's had two double bogeys, uh, so he's five over on the back back nine with four to play. Yeah, Jordan Spieth, I think it was one of those guys at eight over. Phil Mickelson was around eight over. Um, yeah, that's not a very good score. Um even though the scores are a little bit high, but that's that's not good. Well, yeah, if you hit it in the rough yeah. in the U.S. Open, especially at Shinnecock, there's, I mean, it's, you're talking 10, 10 inches of, of grass you got to hit through. So if, if you're a dart-type player where you can hit it on the fairways and greens, you'll be fine. But if you're a power hitter like Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, those guys, uh, they have a tendency to get into the rough, and then big, big trouble will happen. So we'll keep tabs on Tiger Woods. Also, our local guys from the Inland Empire there at the U.S. Open. Two are in the clubhouse. Two are still on the course. And again, back in New York, it's what? 614 right now. So there's probably still a little bit of daylight. They're still out on the course wrapping up the first round of the U.S. Open. And as we mentioned, big win for the Dodgers against the Rangers last night. The brawl with Man Kemp, Austin Barnes, the Riverside Pauly Bear driving home the winning run for the Dodgers. They've got the night off and they're back in action against the Giants. On Friday. So now the Dodgers not only over the 500 mark on the season, now they're closing in on first place. Now it's getting real juicy. Don't panic. And help is on the way. Did we ever panic on yeah. this show? On this show, on Fox Sports IE, did we ever panic? Yeah, I did. Yeah, Jeff did. I but did. Greg Hall and I did not panic. Jeff did. Hey, Dodgers two out, 35 and 32, and uh, catching the Diamondbacks. Giants are just two behind them, so a very pivotal series for the Doyers. In Los Angeles, big series, Dodgers and Giants. In fact, I mean, because Arizona's really stumbled here. We could come out of the weekend with the Dodgers in first place. <laughs> Greg Hollis calling his shot. He just like pointed to center field. We got this. Three run shot. We're out. So the Dodgers could end up the weekend in first place. But again, uh, we need some help from Arizona. They've been stumbling. We need them to continue to stumble. And the Dodgers. To continue this streak, man, everybody's hitting the baseball right now. Great to see Jock Peterson um, coming around. Cody Bellinger's had some good swings. Matt Kemp's doing his thing. It's The guys are finally coming around, and that pitching help. They're going to get healthy after the All-Star break, fingers crossed. Hyunjin Ryu, we could use him. And, of course, the big man, Clayton Kershaw. And we found out, could have been compensating for that elbow, that's why his back is maybe a little sore. That's what our guy, the guru of injury, Jim Clover, told us. Yeah, you know, that was very insightful. And I think, you know, some of it's common sense, but it's good to hear from a medical expert like Jim Clover that, you know, if, okay, so Clayton Kershaw has a back strain, but it's probably because his back was compens compensating for his other injury, which at the time was, uh, what, bicep tendonitis yes. is, is what they were calling it. But he, but Clayton Kershaw has had back problems for years. In the past, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if this is like an underlying issue. Maybe it's the mechanics of the way he throws that it's always going to kind of trigger this kind of injury. Who knows? But the Dodgers are very, you know, treading very uh, delicately here to make sure they get it right because they want Clayton Kershaw to come back. But when he comes back, they want him to stay back. They don't need him to go to the DL again, especially in the second half of the Major League Baseball season when we all assume that the Dodgers are going to make an, a, be play, uh, a playoff push here, which I think everyone assumes they will, even if it's for a wild card spot. But right now, the, the National League West is so jumbled together. It's a log jam. you got to figure the Dodgers, even though they're not in first place right now, still the favorite to win first place yeah. the National League West. Yeah, a wild card situation. They are three back, uh, four teams ahead of them, the Phillies, Cardinals, Nationals, and Cubs. But still not very far back, three back out of the wild card. All right, so we'll keep an eye on the Dodgers. They do have the night off, but a big series coming up with Los Gigantes in La Ciudad de Angeles, the City of Angels. Oh, whatever. The Angels also have the night off. They're going to play on the road at the Oakland A's on Friday night. In fact, Jeff, we've got a friend that's going up to the game. Our boy. How about a shout out. Rob Berghorn and his daughter and family, they're going to go up to the Bay Area and enjoy a, an Angels A's game. We had lunch with him this afternoon. But you did tell him that he could just go to the Big A. Like he could go just. Wait till they come down to Anaheim. He was is a Father's Day gift. He said, he's, "No, we're going all the way to the, the city by the bay, Oaktown. He's gonna enjoy some time with his family and some friends in a beautiful bar park in Oakland. He's gonna go look for Marshawn Lynch. He's gonna go. <laughs> what else are you in Oaktown? <laughs> uh, uh, MC Hammer. He's gonna go find uh, MC Hammer's favorite spots. He might buy a pair of his pants. Do you think there's? You know, in Hollywood, they have those. Uh, 
those tour buses where they say, okay, this is where Jeff Gorham lives. Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. right over here, sometimes you'll see Greg Hollis standing in line for his hot dog and donut that he gets every morning. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, yes. they go around, they tell you where all the celebrities hang out, where they live. I don't know if they have one of those in Oakland. No, but there are, hey, you go up to Oakland Hills, though. Those are some massive, beautiful massive houses. Homes. Yeah, I spent a lot of time up there. Wait, isn't Oakland the place where someone threw a milkshake at you? Yeah, they did. I was, but, yeah, I was, <laughs> but I was just got off Bart. It was a tough practice, and I'm walking down the street, and someone threw a milkshake, a full milkshake, right at me. And I'm telling you now, it could, it couldn't hit anywhere else but my chest, my face. It was the best. Whoever hit. threw it had perfect accuracy. I've never been. And you were so embarrassed. Wait, did you say you were on your bike? Or you no, no, walking? I was walking. But you were in motion. I was in motion. And so the, what, you know what? It was probably the quarterback of the football team. Who could hit a man in motion, running his routes, oh, square it, in the chest? Only a quarterback could do that. But I'm going to say this. It really kind of hurt because he was, <laughs> he was. they were driving in a car. And they drew the velocity behind velocity. it. Velocity. So, so it honestly, it could have gone anywhere, but it hit me square in the chest. It was all over my <laughs> ear. I remember getting, I had, I had milkshake in my ear. And the whole time I'm thinking, I hope this wasn't like the guy licked it and all this stuff. It just was, oh, it hit me solid, and I had to I had to get back on another bus to get home, and it was so embarrassing. I almost threw away my sweatshirt. This milkshake was, guy. Oh, perfect shot. Jeff's milkshake. I still remember it, and I remember it was like slow motion. I couldn't have got out of the way. I didn't even know it was coming. I was just like looking down because I was walking, and boom, <laughs> boom, right in my chest. Good time, good time. We're, we're all happy you survived. Thank you. Uh, and local baseball, man, it doesn't get any better than this. The Rancho Cucamonga Quakes have now taken the lead in the Cal League South Division. Huge win against Lake Elsinore, 4-3 last night. So get this. The Quakes were down two in the ninth. They scored two in the top of the ninth. They took the lead 4-3. to three. Then in the bottom of the ninth, Lake Elsinore loads up the bases, one out, and Rancho Cucamonga turned a 2-3 Double play. That's catcher to first base to end it. That rarely happens. We're going to have the voice of the Quakes, Mike Linscog, join us a little bit later in the show to basically kind of break this down because you don't see that very often in, in, in baseball, period. A 2-3 double play on to end the game. Like, that was it. Well, this is the first time they've been at the 500 mark since they were 11-11 and 11 early in the year. So they've, they've won 11 of 15. They're really playing well right now. And all credit to Mike Linscog out there. Scoggy um, Scog. He, he's the, the brains behind the operation here. Um, and I got a little excited yesterday saying Rich Hill was going to pitch for the Dodgers. I was one day. I was living in the future. See, I'm, I live in the future. You guys are in the present. I'm always looking ahead. I'm living in the past, buddy. <laughs> Rich Hill of the Dodgers will make a rehab assignment tonight for Rancho Cucamonga as they wrap up their series with Lake Elsinore. And the Storm, they're going to throw out Joey Lucchese. So big leaguers all the way around. It's going to be a great game and a huge game. If the Quakes can win, they're going to create a little bit more separation for first place in the Cal League South Division. If they lose, I think they're back in a tie with Lake Elsinore. So it's a whole new ball game. We don't yeah. want that. No, and they're getting re really right now, they're getting ready for the All-Star break. Six Quakes are members of the All-Star team. So a uh, good year so far for the Quakes. Start off a little, a little bad, but they've pulled it together. You know what the all-star break means, right? No. Extra time to listen to Creed and more pulled pork pizza for Greg Halla. He's going straight home after the show. I'm telling you right now, I was thinking about that pulled pork pizza the other night when I was dreaming. I said, oh, I could taste it. Best pizza I've had in a while. We're going to have to bring that in. You know, I heard Greg Halla, he, he was at the beach last night. He went down there for like a Creed uh, tribute band. He did. Yeah. He went down to Sharky's <laughs> down <in Huntington. laughs> He was in Sharky. He was at Sharky's down in Huntington Beach, and he was hanging out, and they was like, yeah, this Creed is... Tribute band. Yeah. Like the greatest hits. And you know what it was called? Greg never misses one of those. It, you know what it was called? It's not Creed. It was Crud. Crud. <laughs> because so, the name... I love yeah, that. Yeah, so you had Creed and you had Crud. So Crud was... How was Crud last night? Was Crud pretty good? <laughs> how was Crud? Was Crud good? It was Crud. Were they, it was Crud? It was Crud. Crud was Crud. Was he hitting the high notes? I cried with a beer in my hand. Oh, uh, I love those tribute bands because, like, like Rolling Stones might be, hey, we're the Rolling Bones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they always change, like, one letter. Hey, there's, I have a new favorite band. Who? <laughs> Weezer. Why? You, because they sing, they sing. Beverly Hills. No, well, oh. that's a good one. That's a good one. No, they sing the, uh, they made a remake, or what do you call it? A cover of Toto's Africa. Oh, and he it, did? That's your um, song. That's my second favorite song in the whole world. Look, I have goosebumps thinking about it. The best. And I'm telling you right now, look it up. Weezer Africa uh, cover. Best song of the year. Let's, 
We're going to find it, and we'll play it as yes, our bumper coming to, back it's, in, all right? It's, a, it's amazing. Deal. Okay. We're brought to you by Ken Sporting Goods. More than 40 years in the Inland Empire, bringing you all of your sporting gear needs. So if you need a baseball, I don't know, a glove, maybe some soccer cleats, some shin guards, some wristbands, they can do it all at Ken Sporting Goods in Horsetown, USA, right there off the 15 freeway in Norco. Or you can visit them online, Ken Sporting Goods. Dot com. They can do team sales as well for your team or your business. They can hook it all the way up. When we come back, how about some Rams football? We got a legend in the house. The great Greg Bell will join us next. It's your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. We focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. push any sales on them. We do the oil change uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. Thank God, first of all. I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner, clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway, off Cahelco, off El Cerrito, and uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings.
We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities. And if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for. I played uh, once upon a time at Centennial High School. I was actually on the uh, first ever CIF championship team uh, back in 2000, and then uh, my senior year, we won it again. I think that's my passion because I've done it. You know, um, I know exactly where these athletes are at. I know what their mindset is right now. I know how hard it is to, number one, find a, a, a performance coach who can take you to the next level. What sets us apart has to be, you know, how we work with our athletes and what we know. We can take an athlete and get and, you know, help them reach their athletic potential, you know, help them, you know, prevent injuries, help get them stronger. I know every single athlete who steps into this gym, I know exactly where they're at and I'm gonna progress them every week. If you're not getting results, then you know, really what's it about? We're gonna deliver something that's measurable, you know, in terms of speed, power, you know, strength, agility. Here are your hosts, Pep Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. And welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. We're brought to you by Boost Performance Training in Corona with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports, lacrosse, golf, football, of course football. He was a star. Everybody's going to Boost Performance Training. Check them out on Instagram and Twitter. We love you, Ray Bass. Hey, Jeff, this is your song. I love it. Weezer. We got Greg Bell in studio. I don't think Greg Bell knows who Weezer is. Do you know who Weezer is? I know what this song is. Yeah, it's a remake. It's, it's a great remake. It sounds perfect. That's a remake? Yeah. Who sang the original? What was the... Toto! Toto, man. Oh, Toto. my God. Oh, man. That's, That's before your time, Pep. Man. It's, you know, I'm not a music guy anyways, but yeah. I offer Pep Toto a was a hell of a band. A great band. <laughs> it was. It, it worked. Yeah, I offer Pep a thousand dollars every single day uh, because Greg will come in with with intro music, and I offer him a thousand bucks. He can name the song and the the artist. He never can get it. He never, never can get never. it. No, I'm not a music guy. No. He don't want to make a he living. Huh? No, and he knows <laughs> everything about country music though. But I don't know a thing about it. I yeah. saw uh, what's her name, Kelsey uh, uh, Bellarius. Bellarius. She does the. Crest commercial. She oh, sings, yeah. And then she does that song called I Hate You. I love that song. You like that? <laughs> I love that song, I'm man. Pick that one up. That'll be Greg Bell's intro. You I love that song. We got Rams legend Greg Bell in the house. Listen, we all love his local camp he does out here in the IE. He's also well connected with the with the Rams. And and Greg, before we get to your camp and, and look ahead to you know next season for the Rams and whatnot, I mean, man, you must take a lot of pride seeing the Rams. Turn that corner because we did a Ram show right. when they first came back to Los Angeles. They were bad. I, you know, I mean, they were not good, and now now they're good. You know what? That that really shows you, uh, really the, the the belief and the and the respect they have for Sean McVay. I mean, that's really what you're seeing. Here's a guy who's half my age. Uh, he's probably a little older than you, Pep, but he's got these guys doing some things that are pretty much amazing. I mean, they turned a team around that was truly 
a five and twelve team or a five and thirteen team, and they went what thirteen and three last year, or yeah, was it 12, 12 and four? What was it? They were thirteen think, and uh, twelve and four. Twelve I think, and four. I think they were twelve and four. They got to the playoffs and they lost to who was laid an egg. Atlanta, they laid an egg. Right? Was yeah. it Atlanta in the first no. round? No, uh, they laid an egg. I, I, it was Atlanta, and they didn't even show up for the game. But you know what? Uh, I think they learned a lot from that experience. I mean, uh, that was a big moment for them. It's almost kind of like uh, uh, like Portland was when they played the Cavs. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really was. And and the moment was too big for them. And, uh, you know, I, I expect big things from this team. Really big. Went out for training camp. We, we were at the OTAs. We have our, our annual reunion about a month ago. And they look good, man. They just look good. Do practices feel different with Sean McVay running the show? No slight on Jeff Fisher, but does it feel <laughs> different? First of all, hell no. Because you know, I took you out there. Yeah. It's the worst looking practices you could ever see. They don't with put Fisher. pads. They, well, with anything right yeah. now, because they don't put pads on. All you ever see them do is shells. You know, they, they run around. They don't even run around fast. But it's just a whole different mentality now. You, you, you know, the collisions are out of the game. If you watch them in practice, you just assume they're doing everything great because Sean's going, that's the way, you know, he's, he's always giving them high fives, but they're crisp. You know, they, that's the only way I can say it. Everything's snappy, it's crisp. They're moving through their assignments. Yes, it looks a lot different than when Jeff Fisher was there. Well, yeah, I mean, look at the coaching staff. I mean, incredible coaching staff. Guys have, have been around forever. John Fossil's the special teams guy. Wade Phillips, defensive coordinator. Those guys are going to make a big difference, especially with this new defensive front that has come in. They've signed some of the best, biggest names, probably the best defense in all of football right now. Uh, you know what? I, 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 that's fine. They can sign what they want. But until Aaron Donald gets signed, I don't really care. You know, this guy has come out, and he's proven himself for you year in, year out. Uh, this guy is the number one player in the, in the league. And, you know, I, I know Indama Sue has been a force. And, you know, outside of the, the antics, he's still a force. Yeah. Uh, but in the in the, the end of the day, you got to look in the middle and say, you know, Aaron Donald's not there for another mini camp. Uh, you want to keep these guys happy. And, and the only thing I say to people uh, who watch from the outside, you do it once, it's kind of like shame on you. You do it twice, he's looking at himself, saying to himself, you know what, I gave the Rams everything I want. I don't want to lose him from the heart standpoint. This guy puts too much heart into it. Yeah, because. It's just the, what, the final year of his rookie deal, and he's already proven himself that he's one of the top players on the defensive side of the football. Hey, top. You know what I mean? Like, the, your rookie contracts, you're not going to get a lot of money, you know, in, in context. It's a lot of money to me. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, around the NFL, he's proven himself now. He did, I read this, he skipped minicamp last year, but he he was there, but he didn't go through the drills. Mm -hmm. So he still got his money. So he still didn't have to pay the 86000 yeah, This so, year, yeah. he's, he's giving up the money. Now, mind you, he, he set out. And didn't come in the training camp. He got fined. I don't That's know the what first that. Game last year, I, I don't know what. No, I don't think he missed the game. He came in and literally he he, he played. He didn't start, yeah. but he came in and played that first game. This 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 crazy part is they're fining him. You know they have to find him because it's in the league rules, and they have to obey obey by those league rules. They maybe can give it back to him or whatever, but they have to find him. The sad thing, like I said, is the first time shame on you. Now he's going to start questioning what their loyalty is to him. Yeah. And I don't want to see that because this guy is a hell of a player. Yeah, just making under $7 million. And you look around the league, there's guys all over who aren't even in the same ballpark as a, as a player. Not, not even in the same league. Forget the, the ball. Same, exactly. <laughs> They're in another country. Yeah, he will get paid. I mean, the, I think the Rams are going to do what's best for the organization. I think they're going to open their pockets because right now with, with Tlaib, Peters, and Sue, and Don, Darnold, that is one great monster. defense. Monster, monster. defense. Aaron Donald is the best defensive player in the league right best now. Best right? player in the league yeah. on the defensive side of it. And nothing against J.J. Watts. Nothing against, you know, uh, any of the DBs who think they're untouchable. Uh, but this guy is a force on the defensive side. And you don't have an answer for him. They're triple teaming him now. And if you can take the take three men off of the offensive line and they have to worry about one gentleman, they're going to be doing a lot of sacks and they're going to be doing a lot of run stops. We got Greg Bell, Rams legend here on the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. Greg, we talk a lot about the about the Rams and the upcoming season and, of course, the offseason acquisitions and how good they're going to be. But amongst you and your circle and all the former Rams players, do you look ahead to next season and say, wow, this could be a Super Bowl championship season for the Rams? I mean, is that is there that kind of hype behind the scenes? I think probably by week 
nine last year, you started talking about Super Bowl possibilities. I, I'll be honest, uh, going into the last game against Philadelphia, that was an emotional crush, I think, for the Rams. You know, losing that game at home with expect, even with the fact that Carson Wentz went out in the first half. Uh, when they weren't able to pull that game out, I kind of saw, you know, you could see the dip in that emotion, and I could see that that last game was going to be what it was, a bad op- outing for the Rams. But uh, we've all been talking about the possibility of this team being a Super Bowl champion. And, you know, we can, you know, can't wait to see it. Unfortunately, the stadium won't be done. And, you know, it might, that could have been the year. Yeah. <laughs> it still could be. I mean, they're still pretty young. I mean, and Dominican Sue and some of those, you know, uh, keep to leave, getting a little older. But still, this is a pretty young core, right? I mean, they should be good for Oh, a it's the young, youngest team in the league right yeah. now. I mean, when you start looking at what they have on the offensive side, you know, outside of Roger Saffold, uh, their offensive line is pretty stout. And I'm going to tell you what, I watched a couple of the young kids they got. They got a lot of nasty little young kids, and that's what you want to see on their offensive front line. And I'm I'm so happy. Again, I go back to that show we did on the Rams. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Todd Gurley was, was having a subpar season. They weren't utilizing him. And then he has a breakout year. He was, what, runner-up for the MVP to, to Tom Brady? Like, he was fantastic. Yeah, I think what happened is you saw a, a, a guy who has the, the abilities, but he got put in a whole new offense that's really better suited for him. And so here's a guy who was a ground and pound, you know, come out of Georgia, all he did was run him. No one really knew whether he had the hands to be a great receiver as well. Turned I mean, out, he turns, he out, turns he, out he he looks like Marshall Falk. Yeah. I mean, he had a, a great year last year. Yeah, he, he actually had the best year since Herschel Walker of any running back. Like combined yardage? Yeah, combined yardage, like receiving, rushing. He was a beast. You know, that first year coming into L.A., I, I think, I don't know if it was the offense or, you know, the Ghost Fisher, but something was off. Two years it could ago. have been Hollywood. It could have been Hollywood. He, <laughs> was, oh, junior, he was doing the Carl's Jr. commercial. And they had hard knocks. Remember they had yeah. hard knocks there? Oh, oh yeah. No, no, no. Forget all of those wives of the Rams. That was the worst show. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. That was the I worst show. That. Oh. I asked them. I said, why even have a show like that? Oh. It makes no sense. You don't need that drama. The drama? You don't need that many eyes on you. <laughs> But you look at the Rams. I mean, you look at – let's compare the Rams to, like, just say the Lakers, the superstars of the Rams. You don't see Jared Goff acting like a knucklehead. You don't see Gurley acting like a knucklehead. They they are really taking this seriously. And I, I honestly, I, I believe that they they believe in the brand and they're giving a lot back to the city of Los Angeles. And I think a lot of that comes because of the last year with Jeff Fisher and Hard Knocks. I, I'm sorry, whenever you're, you're making that kind of transition – and you're not a good team. People tend to forget they were butt ugly. Yeah. The first two years before I, I was going to St. Louis, watching them in St. Louis, they were terrible. Yeah. Todd had a great year. He was working a year, but the team was in last place. Yeah. So it wasn't like the team was doing anything special in St. Louis. The fans were coming out and all oh, great, that grandiose eighteen thousand. Yeah. You know, in a sixty-nine thousand stadium, they weren't doing much when they were in St. Louis. They come here, you know, they kind of get caught up, and. We saw what happens when you get caught up. They've cleared their minds now, and I think they're going to do a great job. Did McVay bring a, a more of a, a, a presence of a business first, do you think? You know what? I, if I if I had to say something about Sean and, and just from listening to him when we were in there with meetings with him and just, just watching the, the, the whole aura that he puts out there, he wants it to be fun. He's still a kid at heart. You know, you can get you can get the, the stiff, stiff tie guy. But you know, you, you he keeps get the most out of the guys. By he gets a like, lot out of it because you know what they they were. I hate to say it this way because when you were talking about some of the old line, you know, the Fox and those guys. Sometimes I get concerned with those guys because the g- generation gap is twice. Yeah, you know, because I'm younger. Than, I mean, they were coaching when I was coaching. Yeah. Now it's a whole generation. So you wonder how well they, re- re- you know, they coordinate and, and, and able to respond to them. I think Sean clicks with them. I hate to use that terminology, but, but I think but it he clicks. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. I think he clicks. Great. Can you hang on a second? Yeah. We're going to take a break. Let's come back. We'll talk more Rams. We also got to get to your camp. Uh, is there still time to sign up? No. It's it's full? 300 is the max, man. Man, look at this guy. We need a, <laughs> he's a, he needs a bigger camp. I'm just here to tell you about it. <laughs> we'll talk more with Greg Bell, Rams legend, here on the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports, i.e. 1350 AM. Sir, I was wondering, did you have...
Pep Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. We're brought to you by Catalano Motors in Corona off of Tobesco Canyon Road. You can buy, trade, and finance. They've got weekly specials where you can save thousands of dollars. And if you mention the Inland Sports Show right now, you get $500 off at Catalano Motors in Corona off of Tobesco Canyon Road. CatalanoCars.com. Did you say $5,000? Five hundred dollars, oh, maybe okay. for, you. Was, yeah. <laughs> for you. For you, Bell gets different cars than yeah, the cars yeah. that I buy. But you, maybe for you, it'd be five thousand dollars. Are you kidding me? You and I went car shopping today, and what what kind of car did we like? You were gonna buy a two hundred thousand dollar Audi. I had to talk you out of it. Two hundred thousand dollars. Yes, debit yeah. card out. He was ready to swipe. You ain't talking about the R eight, are you? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was the little. It's the R eight. That's the nah, sports no, car. Two hundred worth. Two thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand for that, <laughs> man. <laughs> Greg, how's your love life? It's always good. <laughs> you like hey, this hold on, song, hold on. right? This is a country song. This, I, I, is, your, this I, is your song. You want my Barry White? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always have a good time with Rams legend Greg Bell in the house talking Rams, talking youth camps. Listen, I, you know, I'm kind of like a nomad. I've lived in a lot of different places. I know you're all over the place as well, but I know the IE has a special place for you, and you do a lot of stuff out here in the Inland Empire. You've got another camp coming up. How yeah, many years you know, has this, this been? This is the uh, 15, 15th year of the camp. This is the 13th year out here in San Bernardino. Uh, Athletes for Life is my foundation that I helped start, believe it or not, this September will be 29 years. Uh, since my days when I came here with the Los Angeles Rams, and it's all been about nurturing and, and, and giving these kids positive role models, helping these kids go on to college. And, you know, you, you know some of the kids that have come through the program, you know, from the Metters to the uh, oh, yeah, Nate Metters. Clarks to the, you know, Madisons. I mean, th- these are guys that y- you saw they had that gift when they started. Uh, but it's the other things that we try and tell people about when they come to our program. It's not about the football. It's really about the life skills and it's about the education. I, I want to see all these kids have an opportunity to get better themselves better the community that they're from because more than likely they're going to end up back here. So at your camp, you, you know, of course they're going to learn how to throw the football, catch the football, uh, you know, tackling basics, but they're like you said, the life skills, like the stuff away from the football, four days, three nights, we feed them, we clothe them and we give them a lot of mentoring, care and love, uh, anti-bullying, financial literacy. We have a social awareness, what we we're calling social Mediation. I don't know what the great word is for it. The NFL has this new thing, but we're going. You know, the police and the sheriff's department is going to come out and spend some time with the kids. Uh, we've got uh, Common Core math and uh, college prep writing. All the things that's going to take them to what we call the next level, meaning going and making their way towards college. For the younger kids, it's going to high school. A lot of the high schools. Uh, what people don't understand is that these high schools want them to do something during the summer that's positive, that's educationally based. And that's what this program has been for. San Bernardino City, Mar- Mar- uh, Marino Valley, Victor Valley. Uh, those are people who actually help sponsor the camp. The Vertex, the Niagara Water, the you know City of Rialto, the police departments for both Rialto and San Bernardino, as well as the Sheriff's Department. These are all the people who have basically dipped into their pockets and said, let's work with our kids to make sure they stay out of trouble, yeah. keep their minds educated. You know, because it's been proven that during the summer, uh, most inner city kids fall behind. Yeah, they're looking for something to do. It's two, three months of, you know, idle hands. Like, you know, what are we going to do? I've got yeah. nothing to do. We're just kind of hanging out. And, you know, um, and it's kind of like an investment. Like you said, all these that's, people coming it, together. That's You're what investing we're doing. back in your community. And the community is investing in them. So your camp, 300 strong, it's full. But we've got another option. Yeah, right? you got another option because we always – Take advantage of the Play 60. It's a program that we have literally this year. We've been, we got about 300 special need kids that are planning to come out and enjoy it because it's not about how fast you move, it's about how much fun you want to have. Yes. And the thing about the Play 60 that we love so much is about talking about proper nutrition and proper exercise. Just keeping the body active for 60 minutes will change your life. So NFL Play 60, and you were saying um, when we were in the break, like the Rams are going to be coming out, right? Right. The Rams are actually co- uh, co-hosting it, so you're going to see all the big blow-ups from the Rams. Oh, the delivery, yeah, the inflatables. And... The National Guards is bringing their obstacle course inflatable. We're just going to have a lot of fun out there on Sunday for those kids 
that are a little under uh, the age or some of the kids who weren't able to get into the camp, here's a free opportunity, a free shirt, free bag, a free, you know, Coke and a smile. That's, that's, there you go. <laughs> Did you have something like this when you were a kid? Or no. is this why, like, it's so passionate no. to you, like, you want to do this? You know, I, you know, I was fortunate enough uh, that I had people who wanted to sponsor me. I tell people all the time, uh, you know, people do pay camps every day. And I've never done a pay camp in 29 years because I'm that kid who couldn't have afforded a, a play camp. You know, my mom raised me, my dad's best friend. He lives in another state. But it was one of those things where back when we were kids, Pep, you you don't understand this, and you're probably too young to understand it. The cities had money, so we had parks and rec. And so those things have been eliminated. We don't have parks and rec. We don't have competitive programs. You know, you, you didn't have to be a club program to be in a good football program or a good basketball program. For us, it was all always city, you know, city first. And that's one of the things that Athletes for Life has done as well. We've been a, a public advocacy for uh, public education. And I know that people say it all the time. They're going to get a better education in, in, in private schools. But uh, if you look at the number of people who've come out of public schools and gone on and done the kind of things that most of us will do anyway, uh, I, I'm a big advocacy uh, advocate for uh, public education. It's Greg Bell, Rams legend here on the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Greg, you're in the know. Can I ask you some of these NFL headlines to get your take on some of these things? Go right ahead. Okay, so the Patriots, they cut off minicamp. They had, I think, one day. One day. And then they lopped off the other two. They said, forget it. We're done. One was, day. Was minicamp. Tom there? Yeah, he was there. Okay. Tom, terrific. Belichick, Everyone Belichick was there, right? said, hey, remember, his motto was no days off. No days off. <laughs> no right? days off. And they took But you know what? Off. You know, it, it, Belichick is getting to that point in his life as well where you know, sometimes change is, is good. I mean, you know, the, the divorce, and now look, he's got a, a young 20-year-old neck on his arm. So uh, everything's good for Bill right now. <laughs> yeah. And, and <laughs> if, you're, if you're looking at it from a, a, a player's and coach's perspective, 18 years is a long time to be very, very good. It's got to end sometime. Don't you agree? Uh, no, nah, I don't think that. I mean, Bill Russell went for, for years. Uh, you know, the, the Celtics went for years. Magic and those guys went for years. I, I think uh, you're going to see an era where uh, people like playing for championship teams. You know, when, when I came out, I just wanted to make a living. Uh, and I wanted to make a living doing what I dreamed of. So you could have put me with the worst team, the best team. It didn't really make a, a difference. Now you're starting to see where players, you know, with free agency and things of that nature, they want to go where they know they can win a championship. Because trust me, when you're winning, it always feels better. Oh, yeah. What do you do if you're the Eagles, Greg, if, if – Carson Wentz is healthy. Remember, he had the injury against the Rams. Well, if he's healthy, that's who do not you a go question. With? It's not. See, what people tend to forget is, if the surgery was successful, he is going to become healthy. He's going to be a hundred percent. He's probably a hundred percent right now. But the problem is, is the wear and tear, and so he's got to build up that endurance, that strength. That, that I think I read something that in in most cases that's an eleven month injury. So he injured it in noon in November. Yes. Uh, that la that yeah. last. Of uh, uh, visiting game out here, uh, eleven months from then is not July, it's not September, and it's not November. It's actually December. So he's at a position where if if, if I'm him, and I hate to say it because I'm, I'm I'm thinking like him, I wouldn't take a chance. I'd sit the entire season out, kind of like Oliver Luck son did. Uh, what's Andrew Andrew, Andrew Luck? Yeah. yeah, we didn't see him last uh, year. He, he he set the entire season out, and that muscle is now generated is built itself it's gotten this endurance uh sometimes you can come back too quick uh i know everybody thinks that you know adrian P peterson is a, a unhuman person i'll be honest i think his coming back from that knee injury was a uh, one year too quick i mean he came back in like seven months and he hurt himself in like december yeah and he, you start looking at his career now and since that injury he came back like gangbusters but then the next year he didn't have it anymore, and I don't want to hear it because you turned 30. That's not – yeah, yeah. that, that wasn't going to be – I know a lot of guys that after the age of 30, they did pretty well running the ball. Greg, one more time, where can guys get more information, not only your camp, but maybe the NFL Play 60 if you want to check that out. Uh, uh, go to www.athletesforlife.org. That's www.athletesforlife.org, and then you can always look at the NFL Play 60. When are you going to invite me to those swanky, uh, fancy Rams parties you go to? I'm, I'm waiting for my you invite, know, man. He's too clean cut. He can't handle that kind <laughs> of You know what? You know what's funny? We don't really have any swanky parties. No? Yet. I mean, 
That, not really. We've had our Let's reunion stuff, but <laughs> you know what? You, you, you're, you're laughing about it. I've actually thrown that because we have what's called the Legends community. Yeah. And part of what we want to do with the Legends community, it, it should have its own gifting like department. Like a gala or something, yeah. right? And, like, and, yeah. I, and it, we got enough places here in Southern California that would like to have a lot of We got. I, I told people, the Rams are one of the few teams that have a great list. Of legends, and we all get together and we're having a great time together. So, I'm hoping that we can start doing something like that soon. Greg, you're the best. We got to take a break right now. We'll be back. It's the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 
Welcome back to your favorite show. It's the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE. 1350 AM every single day from 3 to 6 PM. It's the local sports leader. Nobody else is doing this. Enjoy. No one! Oh, buddy. We're brought to you by Spoiled Quick Quality Oil Change. You can spoil yourself and your car. Every three or 5,000 miles, you know you need to do it. Get in there, get out, get on with your life. You can feel good about yourself and your car. Spoiled Quick Quality Oil Change. Hey, where's it at? Oh, I'm glad you asked. It's off Alessandro Boulevard, off the 215 freeway. It's right there. Go that way and turn left. It's right there. Spoiled Quick Quality Oil Change. Okay, Jeff, $1,000. Who sings this? Janet Jackson. <laughs> too easy. Okay. Pay me. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Forget you. Uh, the U.S. Open is going up on a Thursday. First round today. And the scores aren't very good. We knew the course was going to be tough. The scores are going to be a little bit high, which hardest is not a good thing in golf. The right? hardest ru- or the toughest rough in the U.S. Open is always Shinnecock. Always. The Hands toughest down. rough. Toughest rough. Right now, the lead stands at one under par, 69, as we have four guys currently at one under. Although, Dustin Johnson, who's at one under, he's on he's still on 17. So, he's still wrapping up his first round. Um, so, maybe he could grab the lead. I'd imagine there's still sunlight out there in New York. They're probably still going to wrap this first round up because I always get nervous that you know, the golf's going to, you know, bleed into the next day where the guys have to get up earlier and, and kick off, you know, finish up the first round to begin the second round a little bit earlier. So Dustin Johnson is also at one under tied for the lead, but he is still on the course. Um, and he's on 17, at least uh, if the leaderboard is up to date. And I believe it is. So our local guys, Jeff, do you have our local guys over there? Cause I we have. had, we had four, let's go through them real quick. So we had Ricky Fowler, the pride of Marietta Valley High School, and and I guess likely maybe the favorite of our local Inland Empire guys to maybe win a U.S. Open title. He was at three over set with a 73 in the first round. We also had Brendan Steele, the pride of him at high school, UC Riverside. He was one shot better than Ricky Fowler. He was at two over, plus two, a 72 in the first round. We also had Aaron Wise yes, and Gazzolo. Plus seven for Aaron Wise. Let me write this. I'm taking notes. Let me write this down. Uh, go ahead. Go plus ahead, Plus seven for, for Wise. And Gazzolo is a plus six through 13. Oh, so Gazzolo is still on the course as well. Gazzolo is still on the course with uh, five to go. You know, I thought Aaron Wise, you know, he, if I can use like a, a hockey goaltender term, had the hot hand. Remember, he just won. His first PGA Tour event a couple weeks ago. We had his Santiago coach here on the show. He's been pretty. He's been pretty strong. He's been solid the last couple of weeks, including that first PGA Tour win. So I thought Aaron Wise um, might be somewhere in the mix. Hopefully he'll make the cut and battle back here. All the scores are going to be high. So I guess what'd you say? Plus seven. Plus seven. Not the worst. There's no. a lot of other guys a lot no. higher than that right now. And in the U.S. Open, you're going to get these high scores. It's not like playing an everyday like. Going out to the memorial and everybody's, you know, minus twenty one for the tournament. There's there is a chance here, depending on the weather, where you can have plus scores going into the final day. Yeah, with that, what do they call it? Like the, I know in soccer when you have all the the powers together, they call it the group of death. There was also a group here. Was it? I think it was Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, and Phil Mickelson. Right. I think that was their group um, here at the U.S. Open, and they all shot high. I think Mickelson was like an eight over. Roy McElroy was like 10 over par. Like everyone was shooting high. This course is absolutely tough. And it's even eating up some of the best golfers in the game right now. So if you're around even par, you're probably going to be in the mix. Certainly going into the weekend. And uh, hopefully, uh, like we said, Gazzolo, the guy who just qualified for the U.S. Open. I mean, he's a Riverside Poly guy. He's a UC Riverside guy. Just snuck in. He had to go through... You know, qualifying tournaments, he had to win this to qualify for the Southern Regional. Finally got into the U.S. Open, and he's making the most of it. I think the guys at the bottom of the leaderboard, where are they around 20 over? Like plus 22, maybe? 22. 22? Uh, yeah, 22, 17, 14. So, yeah, it, it's going to be tough. And, and with gusts of wind and 20 miles per hour uh, and a constant wind of 14 miles an hour, yeah, it's got to be tough to play. 
So we'll keep an eye on the U.S. Open as they're wrapping up the first round here. That's the big story, the U.S. Open, along with the start of the World Cup. And, Jeff, I told you I got up this morning. You know where I watched it? In the bathroom. In the closet. No, that'd be awesome, though. I'd love to be in the bathroom and watch TV at the that'd same time. Awesome. No, I watched uh, on Telemundo con mi gente en español. That's how I watched it. I didn't watch it in English. In español. Football. I, football. I See? had no idea what you just said, but okay. <laughs> it was awesome, though. Man, you know, and I, I hope this is the scene when the United States hosts the World Cup in 2026. That, you know, since we're one of the host sites, that we get the first game. The whole world is watching this one game. It was Russia. They're hosting the World Cup. They're the only game on the first day. Like, everyone is watching them. The whole world. And they went out and they won 5-0. That's like a beatdown in soccer. Like, that's a blowout. I hope the United States, the Stars and Stripes, I hope they give us the first game and the whole world can watch. And I hope we get a big win. I mean, come on. Saudi Arabia is a cupcake. It's not like they opened against Germany, Argentina, no, they, they, Brazil, they, Italy. No. They play in dirt and sand. They gave know. them they gave them Saudi Arabia. But it was probably by design, right? You want to yeah. see the host country. They go out there. Again, I would I would wonder what percentage of the world watched that match. It was, it was in the morning that local time. It was 8 a.m. local time here on the West Coast. Here in the lands, Redlands. If Cleveland can be the land, Redlands can be the lands. Hey. Do you think the Russian bots had any anything to do with the, the Russian uh, bots? The Russian bots had anything to do with Russia playing Saudi Arabia? I don't know. I'm gonna have to say <laughs> I think es, es they, possible. I, I think they had their hand in it. They seem to have their hand in El everything. Mano? Apparently, Russia is back to this being this world power that everybody says that they're infiltrating all of society. I want to know if they do win the World Cup. I'm gonna blame Russian bots. And the there's sh- no way. If Russia wins the World Cup, oh. there's something tragically wrong. You know what it is? It's no. a shirtless Putin. Blame Putin. Blame Putin because Putin always is walking around without a shirt on. He's got all his spies, the KGB. Blame the KGB <laughs> and the Russian bots. But tomorrow, Pep, tomorrow is when the action starts when you have Spain versus Portugal. That's a huge match. That's like the Yankees against the Red Sox. That's like Dodgers versus Giants. That is going to be massive, and I can't believe it's a it's a like a a pool game. They're in the same group. That's, yeah, that's huge. That is an eleven o'clock game tomorrow. Eleven a.m. local time, I believe. So uh, you have Egypt versus Uruguay. Uruguay. Uru. And then you have Morocco versus Iran. 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 At uh, so you have five a.m., eight a.m., and eleven a.m. tomorrow. We have three games. But let's not forget what's let's even not. bigger. What's bigger than that? The U.S. Open? Oh, no, no. Yes, Dodgers, US, Giants? Yeah. The United States Open Cup. <laughs> Do you know anything about this? You said the U.S. Open, but it's the United States Open Cup, and that's an MLS Cup game between Portland, the Portland Timbers, and the Los Angeles Galaxy and Zlatan. Zlatan. They won his Zlatan. I gave him Zlatan. Yeah. And it's at home. So if anybody wants to go out and get there. Is, is Zlatan on his national team? Did they make the World Cup? I don't even know who the hell Zlatan's he, from. He plays for, uh, is it Switzerland? The Swiss. Swiss. Let's have one of the producers look it up. Swiss Beats. One of the uh, producers or fact, fact is, checkers. I've, I just That just popped in my head. What is Swiss Beats? Nothing. It's a producer? What? I know my stuff. I, it just Swiss popped. Miss. No. That's all I know. Swiss Beats married Alicia Keys. See, the TMZ I read every day. <laughs> yes. Just something popped in Your my news head. source. Swiss Beats. But, yeah, the Galaxy, if you have World Cup fever, drive down the freeway and go check them out when they play the Portland Timbers. The U.S. Open Cup is awesome. I've covered Sweden. some of those games. You have Sweden? Sweden? I was right. Sweden. What is this? What is the U.S. Open Cup? It's basically they take soccer teams of all different levels in America, and they let them play it out. Of course, it's going to be like the MLS teams playing for the title. But there could be lower level teams. Um, in fact, I'm trying to think if there's a team around here that's ever made a run. But there could be lower level, like third or fourth division, which you'd consider like UPSL, one of those. Um, and I, cause I remember covering a team that was what they call PDL, Premier Development League. So it's like probably like single A baseball, like you, high A. Like, you were you were got me intrigued here. I have they, a question. But, but Many questions time, in my head right they now. They played Portland at the time. Portland wasn't Major League Soccer. Portland was like a 
what they call like USL first division, like like triple A. So you know what I mean? So it's like all levels and they play each other and they So wait so. a second. So did they take a break from the MLS schedule during the World Cup? And then they're playing this US US Open Cup? They mix no, they mix they mix in the games around their schedules. So it, there's not they, a there's not a lot of games. It's like you play one game here and like maybe like a week or two later you have another game. Oh, so I was thinking maybe they get so can a lower level team beat a MLS team? No. No. But All they right. could try. Sure. But they're, but they do play. <laughs> but they play. Yeah, it was it was a big deal at the time because um, the team I was covering was playing the USL First Division team, and they had some guys who had MLS experience, but they are they were down at the like we considered like AAA, like the First Division. Why are we not covering this? This sounds like a big deal. It sounds it kind of cool. In fact, I think it was called the Lamar Hunt Open Cup for a long time. Well, that's stupid. Who uh, he owns the Kansas City Chiefs? Yes. Yeah. It was like named after him. That's really dumb. I like the U.S. Uh, United States Open Cup, and now I'm intrigued. I'm very, very intrigued. Google alert! I'm gonna, lo- I'm gonna learn all about this. Google alert! It's all brought to you by Boost Performance Training in Corona. I'm looking at you all, you soccer guys. When I was there the other day, they had soccer guys, they had lacrosse guys, they had baseball guys, football guys, and some softball players. There's some gals running around too. Everybody is going to Boost performance training in corona follow them on instagram and twitter see all the cool things they're doing out there be the best athlete you can be fast and strong all right we come back here on the inland sports show on fox sports ie 1350 am you know what we got to get back to nba basketball because the Kawhi leonard sweepstakes are heating up where is he going to end up there was a big expose on ESPN about Kawhi Leonard and where he might go, and maybe he won't go anywhere. Do you remember what I said yesterday? And I want to revisit it because I was the first person to say yes, this. Yes, you trait. said I love chicken fingers. I said no, no, no. <laughs> that was that was but afterwards. Oh, that was after. What you, else did you say okay, yesterday? So are we going to talk about this? I'm going to go. We got to hit the break. Yeah, Let's yeah. go after the break. But I said something specifically yesterday before anyone else did, and I'm going to prove it. You're going to prove it? I'm going to just tell you what I said yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be back. It's the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. So how you guys doing? My name is uh, Coach Ray Bass. We're here at the Boost Performance Center today and uh, here with the one and only Pep Fernandez. And we're going to go over uh, a real basic vertical jump, all right? Uh, we're going to teach you guys the technique and its progression. Um, this is a great drill for really any sports, really emphasizes pure power production through the hips. Um, and power is really important for, for basically any type of athlete, whether you're a football player, track, soccer, basketball, you know, we all want to be powerful, strong athletes. So we're going to go over that today. All right, so first things first, I'm going to have Jacob go ahead and stand with his feet underneath his hips. So you want to have your toes pointing forward. You want your feet to be about hip width, all right? He's going to have his shoulders flexed, all right, in front of his body. So his arms up in front. Okay, now, the most important part here is what's called a counter movement. And what that is, is right, I'm going to throw my shoulders back into extension, all right? I'm going to flex my hips, all right? So the shoulders are going to be flexed. And the hips are gonna, uh, I'm sorry, the shoulders are, are gonna be extended and the hips are gonna be flexed, all right? And then we follow that up with shoulder flexion and hip extension. It's gotta be really fast, all right? So right now I'm just gonna show you the first phase of that. So I want you to, so Jacob, I want you to drop your hips into flexion. I want you to throw your arms back into extension when I say go. Ready? Go! Right there. So come up, that's the most important movement there. So after that is the landing, all right? So we wanna get as high as we can. As I go up, I want to extend through my hips, through my knees, all my toes pointed up, and when we land, I'm going to land back into that hip flexion, arms extended, and I want to stick to landing, all right? So we're going to go over it now. So now we're going to actually jump here, Jacob. I want to see that counter movement. Go ahead and walk a little bit closer to the hurdle here. We're going to extend on the way up as we elevate, extend through the hips and the knees, stick to landing, throw the arms into extension. Here we go. Ready? On you. Believe it or 
not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. push any sales on them. We do the oil change uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. Thank God, first of all, I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just, just for certain schools, and, and the, uh, the, fun, the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very, very good customers throughout the years and it's just been, it's just been a blast. I tell you what, bring your pretty little self over to my apartment tonight, and I'll show you a real man. We're back to the Inland Sports Show. Here are your hosts, Pep Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. We're brought to you by Ken Sporting Goods. One day they will turn that place into a museum, the birthplace of sporting goods. Sporting gear in the IE. I got a Ken Sporting Goods shirt on right now. This is from Ken Sporting Goods. This it polo. Is. Does it look great? Hey, there, you got a lot of glitter on you today, though. I do have what a is lot that? of did glitter. You, did you buy that? Did they glitter that shirt for you? No, I I did, think. Did they bedazzle that for I, you? No, it did not come like this from Ken Sporting Goods. <laughs> it did not come with the glitter. Uh, but I do love Ken Sporting Goods in Horsetown, USA, in Norco, off the 15 freeway. 
No, my, my wife warned me that most of my clothes is it's going to have glitter on it because I think one of my girls had glitter like everywhere and her clothes were in the wash with mine. <laughs> So you got it on your face. I've got it everywhere. You look, Did you go to a rave last night? Were you flinging around your little fingers? You were a rave. <laughs> yeah, well, you I were wasn't, but it sure looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, honestly, I'm gonna. We have to talk about this really fast. Sure. When Friday nights, when we do the IEMG sure. show down in San Bernardino, and yeah, I that's bring my you, favorite show. And I show up. One. I show up just to tell jokes and collect scores, right? I mean, yeah. that's my gig. And I get you a coffee. Yeah, you make coffee. I collect scores. But remember. About once every month, there's like a giant rave in San Bernardino. Yes, and they park is. in buses across the street at the old Inland Center Mall. The old mall. Yeah, the, there's Inland nothing Center? in there anymore. Central City Mall, I think it used to be called when I was a kid. <laughs> Here it is. Thank yeah. you. And honestly, get your pacifiers out. Let's do this. Your lights on your fingertips. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But every time it happens, like, it's like once, once a month, and they bust all these weirdos. Oh, yeah. Because we don't get out of, out of the TV station until after midnight. And that's when they're coming in. And that's when they're just coming into the rave. And there was literally one time at the, at the giant mall. And there was like 500 buses in there. And every weirdo you could throw a stick at. They're all there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Man, that's the best part about going to that IEMG. <laughs> And you, it's so loud that we're inside doing the show, but the building is shaking. You can hear it from the outside. Like, yeah. man, those weirdos are having a great time out there. Dude, you can smell the weed <laughs> two and a half miles away, waking into the place. But you know what's weird? I never, is it at the Orange Show? Like, yes. I never know exactly where it's at because they bust them in. Like, it's a shuttle service. Wait, like, they a, call like a it, Disneyland. I know exactly. I can ask these two ding-dongs. I guarantee they're going to know this. Toto and, and Greg Holla? Yeah. Isn't it called the... Is it the NOS? What is it? The NOS Center? The National... Oh, that's what that stands no. for! National Orange Show NOS! Yeah, National oh, Orange Show NOS. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Buddy, but, yeah, yeah, I was like, man, what is NOS? And I'm like... Hey. And there's buses everywhere, and people are dancing around, <laughs> getting on the bus. It's like going to grad night, but on, like, on acid. It is. It's exactly like, right. it's exactly, exactly it's like, right. hey, we're going to grad night. Wow. That person has pasties on, and they they don't have ponytails. They have multiple ponytails all over their head. And they've got ribbons in their face and weirdos. Yeah, I yeah, I was shocked. I'm like, what is going on out there? The music, the place was shaking. There's people walking all over the street. Because usually we get out of there, and there's no one around. No. It's silent. Like one a month. But, man, if you strike it just right on that Friday, Hello? you really think, honestly, Hello? let's do this. Anybody let's do this as a team. This is the box. Everything stays in the box. Okay, no one else is listening? No one's listening right now. This is the box. Okay. Let's all go one time. Let's experience it one time. A rave? Yeah, we'll take our wives, who are the cleanest, straight-edge wow. people ever, and let's go to a rave. And let's see what it's like. Let's go dancing. Let, let, let's do a vote. a polo shirt. Let's do a vote in here. Who wants to go to a rave? Come on, raise your hands. Come on, guys. I, I'm right here with you. Jeff is the only Come person on. raising his hand right now. Dude, I want to be Jeff, a you would, you would stick out like a sore thumb. No, in I rave. wouldn't. I would. Yes, you you, would. you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you exactly. This is exactly what would happen, and you guys are going to laugh. I would show up at that thing dressed in my polo shirt, my jeans, and my like normal, white, like normal, my guy. White sneakers. normal guy. Jeff. Normal guy, Jeff. If I had hair, it'd be parted to the left. But every single woman, women in that, or women, woman, women, all in, of them, all of them would come over and they would be rubbing on me because I've seen raves on HBO. That's okay as long as I get a little bit of attention and I'm getting <laughs> rubbed on. Seriously, they come up and they rub you and they're and I, I'm telling you, I think I could get in that Zen state of dancing <laughs> because you don't have to be a good dancer to With go to a without rave. a pacifier. With pacifier. Because I have many of my, I got them at my house. My kids are still at my kids' babies. Still on a, I have you a baby on the I'll take the one. I have a glow in the dark one that has teeth. It looks like a tiger teeth. Oh, you'd be the guy. You'd be oh, the cool guy. I'm telling you, man. They're gonna. If you and I go, Pep. We just walk around dressed like we are. <laughs> Girls and and dudes. They're gonna rub all over. Yep. As as good as that sounds, <laughs> as, as as awesome as you make it sound, I think I'm gonna pass. We can eat from a Pez dispenser. I no. bet they do stuff like that. Weird stuff. We'll take ring pops. I've seen ring pops on all their fingers. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I had to go my rave thing. I had to. I was just thinking about it. You loved it. God, it was the best. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it. All you have to do is hop on that shuttle, and it'll take you straight to the rave. I bet it's free, too. Oh, got to be. <laughs> Let's do it, Pep. After the show one night, we'll take our gang, and we'll do it. Just one time. A social experiment. <laughs> yeah. Who's in? 
Yep. I'm in. I thought Jeff's in. Yeah, we're all going. Jeff's in. Nah, you guys aren't fun, man. Jeff's Not in. fun at all. Been there, done that. You've been to a rave, Greg? Oh, He's Mr. Rave. You've been to a rave, too, haven't you? Damn. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They do. They would rub all over me, wouldn't they? Yeah, you're tall. You would rub on everything. Come on, man. Let's do it, Pip. I'm you would you. stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> we'll take Smetty and your wife. Oh, it'll be a good time. Good time. Double date at the rave. We'll get on a bus, <laughs> a big yellow bus. Let me tell my wife. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> at midnight, meet me in downtown San Bernardino. We're going to get on this bus. Yes. And then bring the pacifiers. <laughs> my wife would be like, stop right there. No. Just stop. 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 We can wear blue wigs. We can do all kinds of weird stuff. It'd be great. Good time. Good time. Now let's talk hoops. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kill the rain music. Uh, like Mike, Mike, Mike Linskog, the voice of the Quakes, he will join us. Listen, he's a very big deal. So sometime soon. 4.30, 5.30, nobody knows. Skogganish. He's very Skogalicious. He's very scogalicious. He's very busy. He had a, a very long night, but it was it was very worthwhile because the Quakes won, and now they're in sole possession of first place in the Cal League South Division. They are 30, deal. 33 and 33, buddy. Do you know? Oh, look at you. Oh, I listened to Scogginator on the way home. He never says my name, though. Why? I want him to just one time give a Gorham shout out. Does he say Pep Fernandez? No, he doesn't say He sounds angry a lot of the time. Mm. He does. He sounds like right. an angry, angry man. But I do like listening to him. And Chappy, his little sidekick, Chappy. All right, we're going to talk Quakes baseball whenever Mike Linskog wants to check in. But we will talk NBA basketball because there was a report that came out, and this is kind of, it's a new report, but the news is kind of old, that the Boston Celtics back in February were trying to trying to make a deal for Kawhi Leonard. Yes. Back before the NBA trade deadline. It never happened. The Spurs shot it down and said, nope, we're not getting rid of them. But that was in February. Do you think, Jeff, anything has changed since then? And maybe the Celtics are at the top of the list once again. They could be in motion right now trying to make a play for Kawhi Leonard. But I'm more curious, what is Boston going to give up? Is it going to be Kyrie Irving, um, a draft pick? Is it going to involve maybe one of the young guys like a Tatum or a Brown? Um, You know what I mean? Like, it's Kawhi Leonard. He's one of the best players in the NBA. If you're going to get Kawhi Leonard... You're going to have to give up some value. Well, here's what my thoughts on this. This is, I still think, is you, I have, you I have it, two scenarios. You say yesterday? Okay, yesterday my scenario with the Lakers with Kawhi Leonard, which I'll get into a bit later. This is where I think if they do trade with the Celtics, because remember, Popovich does not want to trade out West. He does not want to make the Lakers better. He has said that's his cardinal rule. But there's a divorce in the ownership of the San Antonio Spurs. There's a lot of turmoil going on right now. Somewhat like the McCourts did in Los Angeles with the with the Do- the Doyers. Here's my thoughts: You would have to give up your two first round picks this year. With the uh, with the Boston Celtics would have to give up two first rounders. They would have to give up Kyrie Irving, and I believe they would give up Kyrie Irving before Gordon Hayward because of the knee situation. The question is, can he stay healthy? A lot of people say that he has the Andrew Bynum knees, which could not be good. That would be bone on bone. We don't know how long he can survive or last. Then they would have to give up one of that those key pieces. Maybe maybe Tatum, but I wouldn't get rid of him ever. I think Tatum is their, the future of that team. But I think with draft picks and future draft picks, along with Kyrie Irving and another one of their studs, I think that's the only way you get them. Because you got to give up something. Yes. If you go with the Lakers, this is what my thought process is here. You get rid of Lonzo Ball, and I want to get rid of him right now anyways, for one simple fact. He shoots 45% from the free throw line. Yeah, you said, hey, Pep, guess what he shot from the free throw line? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go low because I don't think he's a good free throw shooter. I'm going to go low. I'm going to say, what did I say, 64%. Yes. I'm like, he's a guard. He should be shooting around 80, right? Yes. 70, 80 at least. Always. Point guards always should shoot 80+. plus. I'm like, I'll go low. I'll go, I don't know, 64%. 45% from the free throw line. Mm. What is he from the field? He is under, just under 30% from the field. What is he from the beyond the three-point line? Under 30%. I think you get rid of the ball situation now. You get rid of ball. You get rid of possibly Kuzma. You keep Ingram. I like Kuzma. And then you get rid of that dang Luol Dang contract and a dra- this year's draft pick, and you send that to, to San Antonio and you see if that would bring in Kawhi Leonard. If you were able to get rid of the dang contract and make him a serviceable player 
in Portland, maybe a bench guy, because they've been able to take older players and make them decent, then you could assign three max players. One super max with LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard with the max deal, and then you could bring in Paul George. That's three guys, and you still keep Brandon Ingram and Hart. That's a good team. Would that team beat Golden State? That team would hang with Golden State. That team would be very, very good because the matchup problems that the Golden State Warriors would have inside would be ridiculous. Yeah. I think that would be a good trade across the board. Because the Lakers obviously would have a better, I think would have a better front court, but the back court would still go to Golden State yes. with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. But the thing is, Steph Curry has been hurt a number of times. It's always hurt. And look at uh, Lonzo Ball. A lot of people like to think that the ceiling is high on him, but he's making music videos and rapping. We haven't seen him working on his jump shot, which he said he would not change. He's not going to change his jump shot, he said. That is a big problem. He needs to change it in the NBA. Tracy Murray told us, change that jump shot. I agree with him. Let's go back to Kyrie Irving because it also came out that he could sign an extension this summer with the Celtics. But it doesn't make any sense because if he waits one more year, he could get like another $100 million on top of that if he just waits one more season. So, but if you look at next season, I mean, he could that could be a contract anywhere. Yes. So, if you're the Celtics and you're like, you know what, we're not prepared to offer him $200 million plus to keep him here, maybe you do put him in play, like you said, for a Kawhi Leonard. Maybe you already see the writing on the wall like, hey, you know what? We're not going to pay him the money he's going to be looking for next summer. Not this summer that we're in, but next summer. Let's go ahead, put him in play, and revisit that Kawhi Leonard potential trade. I'd be curious to see back in February what was on the table. Like, what was the deal in place? Was it Kawhi Leonard for Kyrie Irving? Picks? Like, what was it? Like, I'd be very curious, and maybe they would revisit it based on the conversations that Kawhi Leonard has had with the Spurs since then or how it's kind of played out the last couple of months because a lot happened with Kawhi Leonard and the Spurs between February and where we are right now. A lot has changed for better or for worse. So I know there's a lot of reports out there that Kawhi and the Spurs are trying to mend that relationship, but I don't know. Ultimately, it's going to be up to to Kawhi, and if he wants to leave, like you said, uh, Popovich does not like the trade inside the Western Conference. So that might limit who who would want to bring in Kawhi Leonard. Well, I think obviously the the first thing would the first guy would have to go would be Al Horford just because he is uh Kawhi Leonard's spot. If we were going to trade right away. Yeah. And I think you could you could package He seems like a Spurs guy, just a solid no nonsense. He's not going to disrupt the team. Big fundamental. He just you know what you're going to get with Al Horford. So you could trade Al Horford, who makes twenty seven million dollars, going to make twenty nine next year, and Kyrie Irving, who is right now is a steal at eighteen, almost nineteen million. Uh, that could be something to open up the books. That would give you uh, and possibly a couple of trade picks to get Kawhi Leonard. Another big name that I heard that might possibly become a Laker is Chris Paul. Chris Paul's not going to get that uh, max deal. And he wants a max contract. He wants a max. He has said he wants a max contract. But there is no way the Houston Rockets are going to bet five years on a hurt Chris Paul. Chris Paul could come to Los Angeles for a three-year deal at a max of three years to come with LeBron James and Paul George. No Kawhi Leonard, but you have three big deals. Of all the scenarios out there involving LeBron James... A LeBron James, Paul George, Chris Paul, Lakers team. Does that seem the most likely of all these scenarios floating most around? If I was, if I'm a betting man, and I'm not a huge betting man, I don't think Kawhi Leonard ends up as a Laker. I just don't see it happening. I don't. That would make it uh, literally a super team. You have the two best players. Uh, you know, we haven't seen Kawhi Leonard in a year, but be, between LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard, those are the two best players in basketball. Best defender, best two-way player, Kawhi Leonard. He even he will block out uh, Thompson. Because Thompson, I think, is a great defender, great offensive threat for the Warriors. But I don't think he could guard Kawhi Leonard on the block. That t- cancels him out. The only question you would have is, can Chris Paul, if you had him, well, no, I, if you stayed pat, I don't think Lonzo Ball can guard anybody uh, for the Warriors. Well, let's take a break. Let's continue this talk of LeBron James, where he might end up. It's just heating up. And there's actually a team out there 
that wants to make LeBron James at least give him the chance to be the greatest of all time. Really? Greater than Michael Jordan himself. Get out. And you're not going to believe what they want to do. I can't but, wait. But they have, they have a plan, and he could be greater than the great Air Jordan. No. We'll be back. It's the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner, clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway off Cahelco, off El Cerrito. And uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities, and if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for. How you guys doing? Coach Ray here from Boost Training. We're here today at the Boost Performance Center with the one and only Pat Fernandez. Today's Boost Training tip, we're gonna get football specific with the 40 yard dash dance. Come check it out. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna establish Andrew's footing. All right, now, he has his left foot up in his 40 stance, so what we're gonna do is he's gonna take his left foot, his left toe, and he's gonna bring it back to his right heel. All right, now he's gonna take his right toe and bring it to his left heel. All right, next, he's gonna take that right foot, he's gonna bring it about hip width. Now, depending on if you're a skilled player, receiver, DB, um, or if you're a lineman, a bigger guy like, like Andrew is here, you may wanna go a little bit wider, all right? Because they usually have bigger thighs here. So he's gonna go a little bit wider hip width. Now he's gonna take that right toe, he's gonna bring, move it back about four to six inches. Perfect, perfect. Okay, now he's gonna take his right hand, he's gonna place it right behind the line. He's gonna take his left hand and place it right above the line. All right, now he's gonna dig his feet in, get his footing. We want to really low the hips, knees, and ankles here. And what we're looking for is a deep bend in the ankles and a nice angle with the shins here. We want to try to keep that shin nice, almost parallel to the floor. So what's gonna happen? He's gonna keep his nose to his knee. He's gonna stay nice and low. When I say set, Andrew's gonna bring that left arm higher than his hip. He's gonna slightly elevate his hips higher than his knees. Now, you never want to hold your 40 stance any longer than about three seconds. So it's gonna be very quick, all right? Here we go. Set, go! There you have it, 40 yard dash dance. We focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. any sales on them we do the oil change uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service vacuum and cleaned your windshield for you as well everything's looking pretty good you come into us one time believe me we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time
Jeff Fernandez and Jeff Corum. Hey, welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. We're brought to you by Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temescal Canyon Road. You can save thousands of dollars at Catalano Motors. And if you mention the Inland Sports Show, you get $500 off. Any vehicle, just point and click, and they'll hook it up. You remember this song? This is your song? $1,000, name it. I don't think so. Run DMC. No. No. Not Run DMC. No, no, no. This LL. Bikini, small, heels, tall. She said she likes the ocean. Hey, I don't know about that. that. Yeah. I don't know about that, but I know about this. <laughs> if Vince Scully and an angel had a baby, it would be Mike Linskog, the voice of the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes, the first place Quakes. Mike, that has a really nice ring to it. How's that sound to you? You like? I do like it when that's part of the introduction. Yes, yes. <laughs> We got Mike Linskog here. Yes, the Quakes are in first place in the Cal League South Division. Huge win last night and a wacky win. Mike, you've seen a lot of baseball. Where does last night's game rank with that big win last night, 4-3, and that weird double play to end it? Oh, man. I, I mean, we, uh, we, we've we seen a lot of baseball around these parts, obviously. And, and I got to tell you, I, I don't know that I've ever seen the play – Go for a double play. So for, for I don't know, I haven't been listening to the earlier parts of the show, so I don't know if you, you covered it at all, but the, the outs were recorded two to three, which is obviously, you know, you'll see a two, three put out at first base, uh, you know, maybe once or uh, twice a week. That's, that's not the big deal. But uh, the way the double play went was two to three as well, and it's a very odd double play. The bases were loaded. Uh, there was a little swinging chopper that literally landed about a foot in front of home plate. Uh, 99 out of 100 times that ball is foul, but this one actually stayed right there in fair territory. And our catcher, uh, Connor Wong, had the presence of mind to not only pick it up, but just kind of graze that right foot over home plate to get the force, again, because the bases were loaded. And then he fired down to first base for, again, what was a 2-3 game-ending double play. And as the outs were recorded, it was it was taking an, an extra moment to process as far as, oh, my gosh, the game's over. Like, that was amazing. And uh, and for, for the game to end like that on a crazy play that literally I've never seen before. Again, we've seen two, three outs, you know, a little bunt, catcher field that fires to first. But with the catcher fielding, tagging home to get the force, and then throwing the first base, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen it in my life, not in person, certainly, and, and not even on TV. We even put a little thing out on Twitter last night to, to partially be sarcastic, partially to uh, to try to get to the bottom of it. We were looking for the 2 3 play out, uh, or I'm sorry, the 2 3 double play the last time it had happened in Major League Baseball. And there had been some 2 3 double plays in baseball, but none of which, you know, were, uh, were, similar, to, were similar to ours in that, you know, the, the catcher, you know, catches a pop up and then fires down to first base to get the guy off the bag too far. Uh, but not never a ground ball, and so nobody was able to, uh, to put it up on the uh, to put it up on the on the internet. And so we're we're all just wondering if this is you know I don't know is it the first two three double play in history to end a game? Could very well be. Scogginator, I'm going to say this: you guys are looking great for the first time since you guys were 11 and 11. You are now 33 and 33. You've won four in a row and six six and four in the last ten. Howard, I mean, you guys are playing on all cylinders. Six are going into the All-Star game, I believe. What's going on with this team right now? Peaking. Peaking. And not the kind of peaking that you're talking about either. I'm talking about peaking like playing well at the right time. So <laughs> it's uh, you're, uh, you're, you're seeing the Quakes really kind of come of age here these last couple of weeks. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I, I got a bit of a, a buzzkill announcement here. Uh, Gavin Lux, who is one of those six uh, all-stars that you were just referring to, he had to leave the game a couple of nights ago, uh, and he's actually going to be put on the disabled list. And we didn't necessarily see that coming. So going forward here over the course of the next four days of the regular season, um, you know, Gavin Lux is actually going to be placed on the DL here uh, within, uh, within the hour. So that's uh, very unfortunate. He's one of the leaders of the team. Uh, young 20-year-old kid that's uh, that's done a lot for us this season, and, and his leadership and his offensive prowess 
uh, has, has partially been, you know, what's carried us here the last couple of weeks. So he's been red hot, as have a, a handful of guys. Uh, but him missing out of the lineup, that's going to be uh, that'll be a tough pill to swallow. But uh, again, we're we're in a good spot. Uh, magic numbers four. This is the first time we've even you know considered talking about a magic number uh, with a win tonight in Lake Elsinore. Uh, that magic number will be two with three games to go. So that's uh, that, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, Mike, you know, you mentioned Gavin Lux. I saw him a couple times in person, a little leadoff guy, but he's got some pop in that bat. I saw him hit a couple home runs. Um, that's going to be a big loss. But tonight, you've got the Dodgers' Rich Hill on the mound. Is that right? Yes, indeed. So Rich Hill will be starting for us, um, you know, with the, the problems that the Dodger rotation has experienced recently as far as health goes. You know, Kershaw, Ryu, Maeda, and now, you know, Rich Hill. Uh, Hill will be the first Dodger to join us out of that rotation. We we obviously didn't get Kershaw uh, the first time he went on the DL, and unfortunately he'll end up on the DL a second time now. And you know who knows about Kershaw later on. That's that's obviously something that they'll address later on in the year. But tonight we're super excited to to have Rich Hill uh, in Lake Elsinore. He actually made three appearances for us last season while he was dealing with the blister issue and. You know, it's it's great that it's it's not an arm issue because that's a, that's always a long term thing. But gosh, that's got to be frustrating for Rich Hill. I know the the blister thing is just makes him roll his eyes and it gets him frustrated. And they're actually trying to petition Major League Baseball to to change some of the rules in regards uh, to guys with blisters that, that battle issues so that they can actually wear something uh, protective on their pitching hand. Uh, and I know that that's going to be up for uh, for some rule changes. Uh, I believe at the end of the season, and Rich Hill's kind of. Uh, at the forefront there, leading the charge for uh, some of these rule changes. Hey, Mike, speaking of rehab assignments and, and Rich Hill on the mound for the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes tonight, how much value, how much stock do you put in the performance in these rehab assignments? Because I've seen a ton of big leaguers. They come down, they come down to the minors, they work on certain things. You know, if it's a hitter, he might go 0 for 3. If it's a pitcher, maybe. I mean, I saw Clayton Kershaw give up a home run. Um, pitching for the Quakes, but then they get back to the big league team, and it's like they never skipped a beat. Like they they go back into big league mode, and they are just absolutely fine. And so, how much value? Like if Rich Hill is great tonight, or maybe he gets a little roughed up, how much value or stock do you put in that? Man, it's it's a really weird scenario, and, and you know, some guys play to their major league potential when they come down here, and they are the, the quote man among the boys. Uh, and you see exactly why they're major league quality and, and ready to go, whether it's pitchers or hitters. And then some guys, uh, literally, you see scuffle down here, and you're like, oh, man, that guy's not anywhere near ready to rejoin the, the big league lineup and whatever. And then they're in the lineup in, in Los Angeles the next day, and they go three for four with a home run. So, you know, it's so hit or miss, and, and you really can't, you know, in, in the heart of hearts, you know, you have no business saying, oh, I know Rich Hill's going to go out there and give you a five scoreless innings or maybe a run on three hits. Like, he might go out there and not get out of the first inning. That's actually what happened to us last year. We were kind of in the midst of a, of a, of a pennant race situation. Rich Hill didn't make it out of the first inning. In his, uh, It was either his first or his second start as a Quake last season. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that, that it's not going to be anything like that. Um, but, again, the reason he couldn't get out of the first inning was was pitch count. It wasn't because he'd you know, give up eight runs and nine batters or anything like that. So it's tough, man. It's it's really hard to put your finger on, hey, is this guy, because he went 0 for 4 in, in the A ball tonight, does that mean he's ready to rejoin the big league club? Um, it's all about health, and, and the results will, will come, really. Hey, Mike, final question. So, you know, full disclosure, Jeff and I are very tight. We go out to lunch. We go to the movies. We're always together. Are you and Andrew Chapman? It is kind of weird, but we've grown to like it. Are you and Andrew Chapman, do you guys attach at the hip? Do you guys go break bread after the game? Do you guys go and share a chili dog? I mean, what do you guys do? Do you guys hang out? Are you BFFs? No chili dogs, but, yeah, we spend entirely too much time together. <laughs> uh, you know, when uh, my, my radio partner changes every year just because of the nature of the position, not because they get sick of me nor vice versa, uh, but the nature of, of this particular radio position changes year in and year out. So um, next year, you know, it's, it's, it's very likely that Andrew would not be back and I'll, I'll have a new radio partner. That's just kind of the way it works out. But they, uh, the guys in the office always tease me that I'm, I'm not hiring a radio guy for the summer. They say I'm hiring a best friend for the summer. <laughs> so, you know, you need to, you know, when the interview process goes down, you know, if you chew uh, your, your chili dog with your mouth open and you got a little, little uh, mustard on the side of your face, there's a real chance that 
and then we're not going to click and coexist. So, <laughs> yes, the answer to your question is I spend far too much time with this guy, but he's a great kid, and uh, we we have a lot in common despite a 20 plus year age difference. And uh, he's he's done a great job for us. We're excited to have Andrew, and uh, he's loving life right now because we're in the middle of a pennant chase, baby. We're in first place, so uh, things are good from from his perspective. Well, you know, next year's going to be right around the corner, and guess who's going to apply for that job? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So don't tell Jeff to just keep his application, all right? We can be BFFs. We can go on the road. We can spoon at night. I'm telling you, it could be a great, great experience for both of us. I have no response to that. I'll let my wife, uh, I'll let my wife <laughs> tackle your spoon question. <laughs> Mike, you're the best. The first place Quakes back in action at Lake Elsinore tonight. Rich Hill will be on the bump for Rancho Cucamonga on that rehab assignment as the Quakes are trying to chase down that first uh, half title in the Cal League South Division. Pre-game starts at 645 with Mike Skoggy Skog. And Skogginator. Skogalicious. Mike, you're the best. Thanks for uh, playing along. <laughs> Fellas, thanks for uh, for having me on. And uh, this is a good situation here. First place Quakes uh, need a W tonight. Reduce that magic number to two. Go quick. All right. Thanks, Mike. Skog dog. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> you know what? You should you should apply to be his color guy for next season. Uh, he would just do it. it just to see to see his face when your resume you comes call, across his desk. Wow, that was hit far, 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 far. No, I'm Scott, he's Scott, did you see that shot? Wow, that was awesome. All right, next pitch. Right, next, there's, you don't even need a resume. You can just listen to that <laughs> you know, and give you the job on the spot. Bingo! Hey, I would use every old, every, th- every cliche that every great announcer has used for the last 50 years, and I would change it every single call. Be like, what are you doing? That's, that's, I stole it. I stole it. <laughs> what do you think I did? I stole it. Yeah, it'd be great. Sampled it. Yeah. Sampled it. Sampling. When we come back here on the Inland Sports Show, I believe we're going to have world-famous intern Angel. He was at Rams camp. He's going to give us a Rams report on this show. I hope he talks a lot. Why? Are you <laughs> done talking? Yeah. Are you out of words? No, I just hope he talks a lot. I love talking to Angel. We'll be back. It's the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Brennan, I can't even make eye contact with you right now. Your voice is like a combination of Fergie and Jesus. Inland Empire sports fans turn to the Inland Sports Show. You you talk to the radio? On Fox Sports. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner, clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway off Cajelco, off El Cerrito. And uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for.
We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities. And if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for. Back to the Inland Sports Show. Here are your hosts, Pep Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. Hola. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Buenos dias to everyone out there. Buenos noches! Yeah, it's actually nighttime. Almost nighttime. It's evening. I consider it evening. <laughs> Jeff Gorham, Craig Holla. Stephen Kono's in the studio. Hey, it looks hey, like, who's that? Yeah, right. I'm a legend. <laughs> just Kono. I'm a legend. See, Kono's like a Brazilian soccer player. He just goes by his last name. Just Kono. Exactly. Me and Ronaldinho hang out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm simply Pep Fernandez. Right now, let's go to the spoiled, quick quality oil change celebrity hotline. It's a good reminder to get your oil changed at Spoiled off of Alessandro Boulevard every three or 5,000 miles. I know world famous intern angel. That's where he gets his oil changed. And that should be good enough for you too. Angel, how are you? Feliz Navegado. I only trust my oil with the fine folks down there at Spoiled. Great plug there, Pep. You know, I knew you got your oil changed there. All, all of the uh, the big-time stars in the IE, you know, we only trust our cars 
with Bill Navigado and Spoiled. But Angelito, you were at Rams camp, and you were asking Sean McVay all of the tough questions. What did you ask Coach McVay? Because I saw it on Twitter. Well, yeah, I mean, when you looked at the moves that the Rams made this offseason, you got to think about just the big personalities that are coming in. Not, not already noting that they had some big ones there as of last year. You know, a Todd Gurley and Aaron Donald, who we're seeing now, has a pretty big personality himself when he wants to get something done. But just adding guys like Akeem Tlaib and Marcus Peters, who, who kind of had that reputation as big personality guys, I've always thought, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how things go in the locker room. But from what McVay told me, Everyone's kind of blending together, and, and when you're out there on the practice field, you can see these guys are, are working together, and, and they know they, they all have the potential to do something pretty big this year. We're talking with Angelito, world-famous intern Angel. Hey, Angel, I'm curious. So when you go to these uh, like mini camps and, and football training camps, I know some of these places, every, every place is a little bit different in terms of these practices and games and whatnot, but a lot of the times you have to identify where what media outlet you're from. So do you have to identify yourself like, if Jared Goff's at the podium, you're like, uh, you know, Angel Viscara, ABC7. Do you have to identify yourself when you're asking these questions at Rams camp? Um, at Rams camp, occasionally, yeah, you'll have to do the self-identifier. Usually a PR person will let you know that. Um, unfortunately, if I don't identify myself as world-famous intern Angel, I should do that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm just straight Angel Viscara, Angel when I'm feeling a little more American, you know? Or Angelito. When you, that's a little Angelito. One of these times, you got to say uh, ABC7 and the one and only Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. And just really just rock the room. Everyone's going to turn their head and be like, whoa, who is that guy? And they're going to be like, that's Angelito. That's the guy who asks the tough questions. I should ask questions in Spanish next time. Si, por supuesto. Mijo. Now, Angel, my big question is, when you go to these press conferences, do you? Does anybody ever say they know? They look at you and they go, "Angel, go ahead." <laughs> wait, 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 Jeff. I'm gonna need you to repeat that one time. Wait, Sorry, so brother. like, so if you're at the podium and there's Jared Goff, yeah, and you're like, "Hey, Jared, I got a question," and he looks over at you and says, "Hey, I know that guy, Angel. That's Angelito." Well, you you'd be surprised as I walk through the players' parking lot. Everybody has Inland Sports Show bumper stickers yeah. on their Maseratis and their Rolls Royces. So you guys are really the radio station of the uh, the one percent, let's say. Yeah, you know, some people say a bumper sticker is a little tacky. You know, you put a bumper sticker on your car, but not the Rams. They sla- they slap that Inland Sports Show bumper sticker right on those the Rolls Royce, the Bentley, the Teslas. They don't care. They they throw it right on there. But it, but really, like if you walk, okay, tell me the most famous person if you walk past them and they'd say, "Oh, Angel, good to see you." You know, well, over the course of my time, I'd say I've gotten to become pretty good friends with my guy Dave Roberts over at Chavez Ravine. Who's that? Uh, the Dodgers skipper? And, I mean, yeah, Dodgers skipper Dave Roberts. Unfortunately, a UCLA guy, but just been working with him the past year and a really good all-around dude who occasionally he'll bust my chops for being the eager beaver in the media scrum, but he, he's a good guy. Hey, uh, my, my buddy, our buddy now on the Endless Sports Show, Tracy Murray, said he ran into you uh, last week. Yeah, he did, and I would not want to run into him too hard. That's a big boy right there. <laughs> um, Stacey Murray's a big guy, but he was a great guy. I mean, we, we pretty much watched Game 3 of the NBA Finals together, and uh, it's really awesome watching a game with a guy like that with, you know, that NBA pedigree because as things are going on in the game, you know, he's giving me insight that, you know, my mom and pop sitting on the couch normally could, and God bless them, but it's great having someone there uh, just to chat sports with, you know? Hey, what did he say about being a uh, uh one of the hosts on the Inland Sports Show for a day. That's a big deal. He said it's uh, more memorable than draft day, believe it or not. <laughs> and he also tells me about all the pickup games that he and Jeff used to play in. Yeah, we played. We've honestly, because I and when he came in, we were talking. I think I played more pickup games with him than anybody. Maybe John Smith here locally than anybody in the world. We played every. We were at UCLA playing pickup games every day. We were in Irvine. We were all over the world playing pickup games. Well, Jeff, I mean, he tells me you used to you used to get some air under those big old Sasquatch legs of yours, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I tell him I can't believe it now looking at you, but you were oh, a high no, flyer, no. man. <laughs> I can still dunk, my friend. I can still dunk. <laughs> there we go. Hey, Angel, what's next? What's next on uh, on the old itinerary at ABC Seven for you? Dodgers game tonight, Chargers camp. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see, but I know for sure this weekend I'm probably going to make it out to Chavez Ravine. 
the hated ones are coming down. And the Dodgers, man, just two games back in the West. Things have really turned around for those folks. Hey, now, Angel, uh, the Rams were out at the new stadium today in Inglewood. Jared Goff threw the first complete pass in the stadium. He did? He did. He threw a, co- a complete pass to one of the workers. Now, have you covered and seen this new uh, stadium in uh, Inglewood yet? I haven't made it down to the facility yet, but yesterday uh, Coach McVay did let us know that the team was going to be taking that trip down. It was kind of interesting that they canceled the whole day of minicamp work to make this trip out with the team, but you can tell the whole organization is pretty invested in the project. And your boy Jack Skellington, uh, I saw him make that <laughs> throw down there. Yeah, he got the first completion. Yeah, and yesterday cool. I, I chatted with Todd Gurley as well after practice, and I asked him if he was excited on going down and seeing the new stadium, and uh, very sarcastically said, he said, yes, I'm thrilled to go. <laughs> sarcastically. Hey, Angel, one more question, and this has to do with the TV world because you're interning at ABC7. All right, so you are the producer for the 11 o'clock news tonight on ABC7. Let's just say you're producing. You're, you're stacking the show. There's no Dodgers. There's no Angels tonight. What is your lead story? What highlights are you leading with tonight? Well, uh, I know they're kind of a region of controversy right now, but the fine Russian folks, the Ivan Dragos of the world, picking up that nice football win this morning. That's right. You could go World Cup or U.S. Open. You know, there's a lot of golfers I know have Southern California ties. I know Rob Fukuzaki and the rest of the guys, Kurt Sandoval, they love Find, like kind of like what we do, find guys who have Southern California roots, right? You could go golf. You could go with uh, the the start of the World Cup out there. I'm just curious. I'm trying to get your brain going in the right direction. Not that you don't have great TV guys around you already, because you already do. Or you could have more Ram sound, right? More some, some Charger stuff today. I'm sorry, brother. I said, or you could have uh, you know more more Ram oh. sound or Charger oh, sound yeah. from camp today. Yeah. We just- I think uh, getting definitely some crews down to the Rams, checking out that new facility would be awesome. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, who knows? Even now, uh, there's a big E3 gaming convention. Um, I couldn't believe it the other day on ABC7. We ran a whole segment on uh, E gaming, e sports. So, who knows? You really? Jump back on that. You could be a professional at, at some professional athletics. Are you at ABC7 right now? Are you at the office or out and about? Oh, no. I'm a. Uh, thrown out in my front yard just laying down talking to you fine folks <laughs> a day off for Adelito I'm gonna guess hey. I, hey do you watch ABC 7 even when you're not there like do you go home and turn on the news to see what's cracking yeah I mean I've been I've tended to watch it more and more now I mean I think local news is it's interesting how that whole medium is kind of changing at the moment with social media and things like that but just kind of being there now and seeing how things work behind the scenes it's, it's always kind of interesting to watch it from you know, the couch perspective. What time is your boy Fook on? Like 5.50? Something like that? Fook's the, usually it gets a 5, 6 o'clock hit, and then an 11 p.m. hit. So, Fook's my guy, man. He's a good dude. He entrusted me with his credit card the other day. So um, Wow, what did you I buy? I appreciate that. Well, he, he gave me the card, and he said, go buy dinner for the office. And, uh, wow. Try not to try not to run him too broke, but uh, <laughs> hit a pizza shop, and we, we bought a couple boxes. I'll just leave it at that. Nice. Look at that. Not many people would trust Angel with, with their credit card, but that's the kind of guy he is, Angelito. I would trust Angel with my children. In fact, <laughs> would you like to babysit my children this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's serious. I'm very serious. <laughs> Angel, man, it's always great talking to you. I predict, because I love this stuff, and, and he's he's a TV junkie now too. I predict that Fook's going to lead with U.S. Open, he's going to wipe to World Cup soccer. He's going to come back out on camera and go to Rams Stadium stuff. That's that's his, that's there his we early go. show. <laughs> Anelito, you're the best, brother. I'm glad that you're uh, doing well. And uh, the next time Rob Fukuzaki's buying for everyone, buy Jeff and I a little something, too. There we go. I'll, I'll get you guys <laughs> something on Amazon Prime. How about that? <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Angel, brother, great talking to you, man. All right, see you, primo. Viva Mexico. Mijo. I love you. Oh, mijo. Bye, Angel. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. No love. Love. <laughs> no love from Angel. Mijo. Oh, that's disappointing. What do you mean really, no love, Angel? He didn't, say, he didn't say I love you. No. I love, you know what? When people don't Probably say I heard your you. rave segment. Scared him <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> Scared him off. Yeah, I'm telling you. When we come back on this award-winning edition of the Inland Sports Show, this one's gonna, they're going to write books about this show today. Uh, when we come back, I still got to get to the fact that 
There's a team out there, and they have a plan on how they can make LeBron James the greatest basketball player to have ever played. Better, specifically, than Michael Jordan. They know how they can do it. Really? Yeah. I'm excited about this, too. This is a great show. I'm telling you. We'll be back. It's your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner, clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway, off Cahelco, off El Cerrito, and uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities, and if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for. focus on the customer here. Right. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want a, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's, that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. Come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time.
Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. We are brought to you by Ken Sporting Goods, more than 40 years. Right here in the IE, they're one of us, providing you with all of your sporting gear needs and Letterman's jackets. They can do team sales as well. They got it all. Cleats, baseball bats, helmets, gloves. Maybe you just need some cool polo shirts with your logo on it. They can do that too. No order is too big. They can hook it all the way up at Ken Sporting Goods off the 15th Freeway in Norco off Hamner. Visit them online at KenSportingGoods.com. You guys know this song, right? Yeah. You guys know this song. Of course I know this song. Do you know this song? I hadn't heard it until right now. Come on. <laughs> but this is by request. I feel like we're an FM station. DJ Greg Holla down here. Spin in the beat. Is that what they do? They yes. spin the, you spin beats? Okay, spin, spin beat. in the beat. Yeah, you spin beats. Play beats, spin beat. beat. Play beats. You don't spin anymore. You, you do lots of spinning. No, you don't spin anymore. I mean, because yeah. There's no records. Lots there's no of vinyl. spinning. I have a lot of vinyl, though, at my house. A lot of vinyl. I'd like to bring in my record collection. I have a lot of the chipmunks. Chipmunks who sang a lot of the I think I had that, too. Oh, they sang the greatest. They sang the... The Beatles' greatest hits, but it was the Chipmunk. Oh, it was fantastic. My mom. How did would, you sit through that whole album? What are you talking about? I was a kid. I was like seven. My crap. mom, though, my mom would play that every Saturday morning for us. Every Saturday, she put put it on. What's the most famous Beatles song that you can think of? Strawberry Fields. Hey Jude, sing Hey Jude right now, Jeff, in a Chipmunk voice. Wait, wait, wait. hey no, Jeff, I'm not doing that. I don't think they were. I don't think they were chipmunk songs. I think you just had it a little higher. Oh, you changed the, the speed of the. Yes, of the you album. had the speed all the way. Fives or thirty threes? I think it you're, was. You're supposed to be at thirty three. You had it at forty five. That's why it sounded like chipmunks. Possibly. Possibly. It might have been the Beatles. <laughs> but no, I would. Say, I remember this though. I remember this song. Every Saturday morning, my mom would come in. She'd be like, "Good morning, boys." She, she, <laughs> and, and we would hear on the record player. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, ting, wah, wah, bing, 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 bing. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, wah, wah, bing, bing. bing. Yeah, there we go. Every Saturday morning, I grew up with that. It was great. Hey, wah, wah, wah. My mom's listening right now. But this. I don't know. You know it? Oh, it is a wish doctor. That's right. That's right. It's a tongue twister, too. That's a hard song to sing. Very, very difficult. difficult. Very difficult. Okay, let's. Talk to us, Pep. Well, this song is going out to Mike Linskog. He is the voice of your Rancho Cucamonga Quakes right here on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. The Little Spoon. Yeah, because remember, you and I are very tight. Yes. We do everything together. We do a lot. And we were wondering if Mike Linskog and his partner, Andrew Chapman, if they're if they're just as close. No. I don't think they're as close as us. No. And you said, but if you could be Mike Linskog's partner... Color man. You guys could do everything together. In fact, you'd be willing to spoon like on the road trips. Of course I would. I got to keep my man, my my play by play guy, warm at night. <laughs> and I'm a big, big man. On those cold Visalia nights. Yeah, I, I'm the large spoon. He could be the mini spoon. So this song that we just played was called what? The Spoon Man? Spoon Man. Spoon Man. So that so th- this is from Mike Linskog. He sent it to me. He texted me the link. I guess he's a big fan. Well, apparently he's thinking about I, the spoon of Jeff. I, th- he, you know what? <laughs> he's thinking about you right now. You're darn right. You got yes. it in his head. I am going to apply next year just to mess with him because I'm, he's going to have to interview me. Yeah. I'm going to go in and talk to him. So, Jeff, what's your broadcasting experience? I do color. All color. I do basketball. I do football. I've done baseball. Soccer. Soccer. I've done every major sport. The only one I haven't called I want to call is water polo. I heard water polo is fun to call. Intense. What about hockey? Hockey? No, I don't know <laughs> enough about it. Hockey. I just don't know enough about hockey. Hockey? Hockey, no. And then, but what am I going to do uh, play-by-play hockey? Ice Town down on Tyler? Sure. Hey, let's go over and let's sure. go to the Ice Town. You just show me. I'm sitting there with a bunch of... 45, 50 year old guys playing hockey, and I'm doing play by play. Yeah, but you're lucky you'd walk in and be like, oh, it's Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> it's probably true. <laughs> oh, he's on my team. <laughs> hey, Mario, good to see you again, buddy. Mario Lemieux, <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> hey, did, sure. you, did you see that, Jeff's luck. that one of the Capitals was had one of his fingers cut off during the game? During the game. That's a tough sport, and right he still there. played, didn't he? Yes. That's like Ronnie Lott. Remember Ronnie Lott lost, lost the tip of his finger and continued to play? Unbelievable. That's crazy. He it is the, crazy. Can you imagine screaming winning, like a baby. <laughs> winning the Stanley Cup? I mean, just looking down, you're seeing one of your digits gone. Wouldn't you <laughs> literally want to pass out or go into like a, some sort of shock? If I lost the phalange, it would be bad. Yeah, phalange would be really, really bad. It would be a but bad scene. I'd be crying. He lost a finger. 
Somebody did somebody drive over it with their skate? I have no idea. But I, how's I, it happen? Because this didn't come until after the fact. Like days after of, the Stanley there's Cup. There's pictures of him. Oh, there's pictures. Well, there's pictures of him holding the the, the trophy, and you can see the tip is like Wait, gone. Was it bandaged? Yes. Okay, at least bloody. It was, bandage. Okay. it was a bloody bandage, Ugh. and he had his finger cut off during the kind of like Kurt cup. Schilling, right? The bloody ankle. I had the bloody the ankle. Red Sox. Do you remember that? We never discussed that. I came in studio and I had a really bad blister, and I was bleeding in my. It was a really bad blister. It was horrible, and I bled through, and you guys were calling me Schilling. And yeah. I, I had one of my better days on radio that day. In fact, I wish we would have kept that sock. We could have pinned it up on the wall. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Like the Kurt Schilling, yeah. Jeff Gorham bloody sock. It, it was bloody. Red sock. Our red sock. It was like the Shroud of Turin of socks. That's right. The Shroud <laughs> of Turin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get serious. Okay. Because this is a very serious thing. It is. It's drive time. There's a team out there, and they've got a plan how they can prove LeBron James is the greatest of all time, even greater than my number one, Air Jordan. They think if he can do this, he would be the greatest of all time. Okay. You guys, you guys ready to hear this? I'm ready. Here's the deal: LeBron James can go anywhere, right? He is free agent. Lakers, Sacramento, Spurs, Sacramento. In fact, I saw I follow someone on Instagram, and they're like one of those podcast blogger kind of deals. And they had a, a photo edit of LeBron James in a Sacramento Kings uniform. And, like, the very first comment was, yeah, that will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, at least we're realistic. No, he could go anywhere. Philadelphia, Boston, San Antonio, Lakers, anywhere. But there's one team out there that has a, a, a plot, a ploy, a plan to prove to everyone that LeBron James is the greatest, even greater than Michael Jordan. Because that's really the kind of the debate we've been having is he's been so good on these kind of mediocre teams, eight straight NBA Finals. That's got to count for something, right? Yeah. <laughs> East. <laughs> Eastern Conference. You're not is impressed? Rotten. No, Eastern Conference is rotten. No, I but, could take him to the Western. I could take him to the Eastern quarters for God's sake. No. Eight straight NBA Finals. That's, that's pretty cool. He's won one NBA <laughs> title. A lot of people are comparing him with Michael Jordan. Some are saying he's better than MJ. There's a team out there that can prove finally once and for all that he's greater than MJ. You know that who that team is? You guys want to take a guess? Kona, who, who would you guess? What team could do that? Prove that he is better than Jordan. Think he'd go to Chicago, play for the Bulls? Oh no, that's a good. That's a good. What if he uh, went to the Bulls play. and took him to a title? I could see him going to the, not Bulls. the Bulls. I could see him. He, oh, I was to say him and Dwayne Wade would go. The Agua Caliente Clippers. No, that'd be pretty amazing. Take him to the NBA championship. The team that wants to make LeBron James an offer to prove once and for all that he is greater than Air Jordan. The Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. What? It's a minor league baseball team. What? They say if LeBron James plays baseball and he's good and better than Jordan, because remember Michael Jordan (laughs) played in the minors, never made it to the major leagues, that if LeBron can play minor league baseball and prove he's a baseball star and make it to the major leagues, it would prove that he is a greater athlete than Michael Jordan because Jordan did never he never did. He played in Wrigley Field. He actually got a hit in Wrigley Field, but that was like an exhibition game against the Cubs. It wasn't a regular season major league game. So the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, which is that Pennsylvania, I want to say? Lehigh Valley? I want to say the uh, Pennsylvania or Utah. They've got billboards. They've got a whole campaign. They want LeBron James to play minor league baseball to prove to everyone that he is better than Michael Jordan. Okay, well, let's, let's <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about this. Okay, let's talk about this. LeBron James was an all-state wide receiver. Football. Was he, football. Yes. I, think, I believe he was state player of the year in football. Um, so how could we equate Michael Jordan to that? Because if he wasn't as good of, in baseball, could Michael Jordan play football? We can never find out because Michael Jordan never touched a pigskin. Ever. That is true. But LeBron James. So it would be different Austin. sports. I have no idea if LeBron James ever played baseball. But the Iron Pigs from Lehigh Valley, the AAA affiliate of the Philadelphia Phillies. Oh, AAA. AAA, that's high level. Oh. They're willing to bring them in. Hashtag oink on is their hashtag. The Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. In fact, look look on their Twitter. Their header on oh, their Twitter account LeBron James. is LeBron James in their uniform. It says, Our Pitch. To LeBron. LeBron James. To the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Where's Lehigh Valley? Uh, uh, you, you said Pennsylvania. I, yeah. I, is it Pennsylvania? Yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, oh, Pennsylvania. Good for you, Pep. 
Hey, who's the best athlete? Of, uh, do you think uh, LeBron James is the best athlete in right now in sports? If you take athletes in sports, guys, that if you took them and they could play baseball, basketball, and football, maybe tennis. Let's just throw tennis in right there. now. Yes, the best athlete, true athlete in sports. Can you name a better athlete? Ooh, that's a good one. Because actually, the first name that came to my mind, and but he's no longer playing, was like a, a guy like Tony Gonzalez. Yes, the tight end in the long time tight end in the NFL. What about Aaron Judge? Is he built like he kind of hides under the jersey? Like is Remember, he is he ripped? He, he played football. Or what about, what about Giancarlo put, Stanton? Oh, that's good too. But I want to say oh, Judge played right. all state Judge basketball. Was. Man, Judge was, was a star. He was an okay basketball player. Bo Jackson, yeah, he's got fake hips. Um, <laughs> you're talking about like right, right now. this second. Oh, all right. Yeah, Bo Jackson uh, was probably the best athlete I've ever seen. You know what? Kono might be right. Aaron Judge was like all state in everything. Yeah, but he was he's from like a place like, Tur- like he's like Turlock, wasn't he? He's like, like from Madeira Cotton- he's like or from one of the Cottonwood. No, like Cottonwood. come on, that's my Yeah, hometown. I mean really, he was playing as nobody's and he wasn't no. recruited. He wasn't recruited as a Division 1 basketball player. LeBron James was recruited as a Division 1 football player by Ohio State. Ohio State offered him a scholarship to play football. Oh, you shake your finger at me. I'd say Aaron Judge. No, you're that's crazy. A good, that's a good call. Here's Better? a close second. It's a, not a baseball player. Jameis Winston. Who was a right fielder for yes. Florida State? He played yeah. baseball in college, and he—I'm guessing he can. He's tall. He, I'm guessing he can play I, basketball. If between LeBron and him, I'd probably go LeBron. But between LeBron and Aaron Judge, I'd th- have to think about it. No, because Aaron Judge. No. Aaron Judge. Okay, it was no. Aaron Judge, the, the no. All State uh, player in California in football. Let's look, let's that, look up. that up. Let's go in to the football? break. When we come back, let's talk more about this. Who's the greatest athlete in sports? Period. And then we'll also have an update from the U.S. Open. We had one local guy, David Gazzolo, still on the course. Everyone else pretty much in the clubhouse at Shinnecock Hills in New York. So we'll bring you a golf update as well. We'll be back. It's your favorite show. It's the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE. 1350 AM.
We're back to the Inland Sports Show. Here are your hosts, Pep Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. We're here every single day. Shout it out to the IE from 3 to 6 p.m. live at Amplified. Greg Holla, Jeff Gorham, even Kono's in the house. I'm just Pep Fernandez. We're brought to you by Boost Performance Training in Corona with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels, youth, high school, college, doesn't matter. Might be playing lacrosse, maybe running track, golf, baseball, football. Everybody's going to Boost Performance Training. Bring out the best in you, too. Get boosted. Boosttrainingsystems.com. Boost Performance Training with Coach Ray Bass in Corona. All right, we're going to have some Major League Baseball score updates and an update from the U.S. Open. And uh, we're going to continue. Who's the greatest athlete in sports right now? Let's save that for the end. Let's get to the scores first, okay. shall we? Let's do yes. the scores first. So right now, at the U.S. Open, it's all done. Where's my paper? Here it is. You hear that? I hear it. My notes. <laughs> Lots of notes. Okay. Uh, U.S. Open. So there's a, a four-way tie for the lead at one under par. So the scores are not going to be great. The, tough, the course is very, very tough. Uh, so four guys at one under par. Tiger Woods, I know you're wondering, he's at eight over. Here's our local guy. And he's only, if you do the math, three shots off the lead. Brendan Steele at two over par. Fired a 72 today. Ricky Fowler at three over. He had a 73 in the first round. Aaron Wise, the pride of Santiago. He's at seven over. Fired a 77 today. And David Gazzolo. The local guy who just snuck into the U.S. Open at the last moment, qualifying for it. The UC Riverside product and Riverside Poly High School guy. Eight over par in the first round. Actually, not bad. That's not not a bad score. When you look at everybody else in the field, Gazzolo did just fine. On one of the toughest courses in America. U.S. Open, they let the the rough just kind of grow for about a week. It's a tough place to play. All right, a couple of Major League Baseball scores from this afternoon. Um, and one significant one, the Giants losing to the Marlins by a score of 6-3 to three in 16 innings. So, big win. Um, did I say they won? They won. Okay, just to make sure. I was looking at the next score, and I was like, oh, I jumped to the next score too fast. The Giants won 6-3 to three against the Marlins in 16 innings. It was a marathon, and that's who the Dodgers get next. It'll be Dodgers and Giants in Los Angeles beginning Tomorrow night, also from this afternoon, the Astros beat the A's by a score of 7-3. to three. So, Houston now 20 games over 500. Can I give a quick shout-out to Evan Gaddis, the third baseman? Yes. He had 10 RBIs in two games for Did the he Astros. really? Broke the uh, Astros franchise record for most RBIs in two games. They're red hot. As an Angels fan, are you okay with that, Jeff? Mike Trout, four home runs, <laughs> two days. Mike Trout, that's all Angels fans ever say. So, Angels, they got swept by Albert Seattle. Uh huh. Shohei Otani. Who's hurt? <laughs> Andrelton <laughs> Simmons. He's maybe, hurt. Maybe he doesn't know this. He's hurt. Okay. All right, give me some other scores, Pep. All right, just a couple other ones from this afternoon. Tigers 3 to 1 over the Twins. The Phillies over the Rockies by a score of 9 to 3. Those are both final scores. And one more final from this afternoon because there's several. Other games in progress. The Indians over the White Sox, five to two. The Indians now thirty-six and thirty-one on the season. Jose Ramirez home run number twenty, but Trout's got twenty-three. Yes, and so he's that's good. what matters. He's the best player in the history of the world. Would you like to know a, a stat of the day? Stat of the day. Yes. Here we go. On this date, Nolan Ryan pitched thirteen innings. He threw not one. But 235 pitches. And what? S- yes. And struck out 19 batters. And guess Good what? Lord, that's a freak show. And guess what happened? What? He it, won? No decision for old Nolan All Ryan. All that work. 235 pitches, 19 strikeouts, and 13 innings. Did he ever have Tommy John? No. He was a workhorse. Man. He, hey, he not only threw no hitters, he beat the hell out of Robin Ventura. He did. Headlocked him and just <laughs> beat him like a round. drum. And he was, what, like in his 40s? He when was that in happened, his 70s it? when oh. he did that. Nolan Ryan's a stud. Yeah, okay. Nolan. Three minutes. 
for the best athlete in sports, we brought up Aaron Judge. Do you still have that Aaron Judge in front of you, Kono? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Okay, so Aaron Judge, we were saying, like, oh, he's a great baseball player, right? But was he was he a great athlete? And we, we thought he was, but... Yeah, well, he had a scholarship for football to UCLA, Stanford, Notre Dame, and Washington. And then I can't... It says that he had... Uh, college recruits for basketball, but it, I can't find any listed. Yeah. But he did lead his school. In, he led his school in Life scoring. Bible. He led his school in scoring. Linden Life. High School, his junior and senior year. Ugh. See Jeff. So okay, he, here's my here's my Aaron list. Judge, LeBron James. Who else would be on the short list of the greatest? I want to see LeBron right James and Aaron Judge run the hundred. Who wins that? LeBron James. I think it's LeBron. LeBron James is probably the fastest guy in basketball. Who can lift the most weight? LeBron James, the beast. <laughs> LeBron James, you're crazy. Didn't LeBron say hey, he doesn't lift weights hey, a couple I, it years ago? It doesn't matter. Have you looked at him? He's chiseled. It doesn't matter. He's a chisel. <laughs> Look a at him. Chisel. Okay. Look at him. I have one for you. It's another basketball player. Giannis and the freak. The Greek freak. The yes. Greek freak. That guy. Super athlete. You're right, but I think I'd still take LeBron over him. I don't think he would be coordinated enough to play baseball. Greece don't have baseball. Yeah. They, they have... got soccer. <laughs> so... And I'm telling you, yeah, they got soccer and they got bocce ball. I know that because the Italians sold it to them over there in Greece. Now everybody plays bocce ball in that area of the world, in the Mediterranean. From the <laughs> from the football world, who would it be? We got a basketball player, LeBron James. We kind of narrowed it down to Aaron Judge from baseball, right? I threw out Jameis Winston. You guys shot it down. Yeah. Maybe Cam Cam Newton. He's pretty athletic. Uh, Drew Brees, pretty athletic. I'm going to throw out this name. Don't call me crazy. Don't say Des Bryant. Don't say OBJ. Christian McCaffrey. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's yes. kind of a freak show. Like, he's super fast and yes. strong, but not real big. And a great basketball player to boot. Yeah, I bet you can oh, hit wow. a baseball, too. Yeah, he was a great Great basketball player. I'll throw player. his name out there. I was going to say Russell Wilson, but I don't know if he can play basketball. Russell we know he can play baseball. Oh, yeah. He got drafted. That's Another, a good pick. Yeah, yeah. Baseball players usually aren't great athletes. Sorry. What? Uh, what? Oh, sorry. Did I say Depending that Depending on the position, Did Jeff. Did I say that out loud? Depending I on the position, at no. the pitchers this, or this, not. This Bartolo made, Colon. Oh, God. <laughs> pitchers excluded. <laughs> Bartolo. Look at him. Just look at him. This is a conversation we'll have to continue. Yes. I love this con- this talk, you know, when you talk about who is the greatest athlete because a lot base hitting a fastball or a baseball or a curveball is probably the hardest thing, right? Andrew McCutcheon, great athlete. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, let's think about All this. Right, think, okay. We got to take a break though. Okay, let's take a break. Because Mike Linskog is sitting there waiting for us to finish cuz in about 50 minutes, he's going to hit the air with Rancho Cucamonga baseball. We got Rich Hill from the Dodgers, Doyers. On the bump the Quakes tonight. We'll be back. It's your favorite show. It's this this is the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. First, you got to do the... Tr- we focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. Thank God, first of all, I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online 
stuff for your teams as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway off Cahelco, off El Cerrito. And uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities, and if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for. I played uh, once upon a time at Centennial High School. I was actually on the uh, first ever CIF championship team uh, back in 2000, and then uh, my senior year we won it again. I think that's my passion because I've done it. You know, um, I know exactly where these athletes are at. I know what their mindset is right now. I know how hard it is to number one find a, a, a performance coach who can take you to the next level. What sets us apart has to be, you know, how we work with our athletes and what we know. We can take an athlete and get and, you know, help them reach their athletic potential, you know, help them, you know, prevent injuries, help get them stronger. I know every single athlete steps into this gym. I know exactly where they're at and I'm gonna progress them every week. If you're not getting results, then you know, really what's it about? We're gonna deliver something that's measurable, you know, in terms of speed, power, you know, strength, agility. One more guy to add to that mix is super athlete. Who? Our guy, Brian Robin, said, Dustin Johnson. He said, I'm not kidding. The, the golfer, golfer, is he, he a great said, athlete? He said, the dude can dunk, he can high jump and hit a golf ball 400 yards, among other stuff off the top of his head. That's a good one. I didn't so, know yeah. that. So, That's a great so, one. Good job there, Brian Robin, as he is driving, listening to us. See, he's the best looking I guy I know. I gotta be honest, I didn't think of golfers. No. No. I, mean, I went straight to like baseball, ah. football, basketball. Yeah, we we should have gone table tennis. Mr. Tiger, Tiger Woods, I mean, he's, he's not cut like a golfer. He's pretty ripped.
Uh, yeah, I don't think he can run, though. No. He got, Maybe. I mean, not not Tiger right he's now. He's got, like, r- rods in his back. But, you know, I always picture Tiger as kind of a pansy. I do. I picture him as a pansy. Really? Yeah, I do. I think I'd, I would hurt him in a fight. Well, the Street Inland fight. Sports Show, like every single day, is brought to you by our good friends at Catalano Motors in Corona off of Tabesco Canyon Road. Listen, if you go to Catalano Motors right now and say, the Inland Sports Show, they will give you $500 off any vehicle there. All you got to do is say Inland Sports Show. We do it for you guys. We're only here to help. So I'm really excited. I'm always excited. CatalanoCars.com. All right, we got Quakes Baseball coming up. They are taking on Lake Elsinore. It is a huge, huge, huge game for Rancho Cucamonga. They're trying to win that Cal League South Division first half title. Right now, they are a game up on Lake Elsinore. Looking to keep it that way as they round out this series. Hey, Pap, I want to say this. This was this was really a good week. And I look forward it's to it. not over. Wait, what do you mean? Tomorrow. Today's not Friday? No. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Tomorrow will be there. It's we'll been a good on. week so far. Yeah, it's been good. Four days in the books. <laughs> and we had to do a whole show today. Mike Linskog made us go the whole way. We had yeah. what, 20 minutes off last Holy couple God, nights. The last three nights. It's been great. The Dodgers, Rich Hill on the mound for Rancho Cucamonga. You can listen to the game live right here on your local sports leader, Fox Sports, i.e. 1350 AM. As for us, we'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock on the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports, i.e. 1350 AM. Bye. In case I don't see you.